Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, your best source for the newest Atari games, and today we're playing some Atari 7800 games. Oh shit. Oh, oh yeah. shit. Uh, in particular, two Muddy Vision games on the Atari 7800, one being an exclusive, so we're very excited. We're going to be playing Artie um and exo already is an exclusive work in progress update and exo is the final digital release of the game full final version very cool both by muddy funster and both i believe music by synth papa Luza. and we have uh muddy funster lewis hill in the chat today with us to answer any of your questions about his awesome games hey dmx87 um, but before that, we're going to let you know who uh, supports the show through Twitch. The subscribers scrolling beside Erlen there. Erlen's name's above him. Good. I remembered there to do we that. Go. Alan the Firearm, Scar Coder, Atari 1974, Atari Age, Taurus Maximus, Beef Supreme, Beer Poke Up, Buffalo Pinball, Chelsea Donnie Mal, Charles Wheel and Chitla Lacro, Lamb McDan, if you see Daryl 1970, Drex, All Duck Boo Cows, Gamma Dev, Glenn, uh, Glenn Main, yum, Great Offender. Yum, oh, yum, it's street yum. time! Yum, yum. Oh, right in the middle of names. We've got to finish the names first, kittens. Calm down. Uh, Glenn Main, Great Offender, Gretams, Ground Trooper, Azure Rapper, Johnny WC, Kabuto Kenzo, uh, Carl G, Ken Jennings, Veda Kvaltiver, Kev Keller, Lambda Express, Learning DZ, Mark Yannis, Mark Spacing, Mick Muse, Mike Sol, Mike Littell, Miska Man, MK Smith, Mother 3, Master Zarnu, Mr. Fix, Mighty Funster, Nathan Strom, Neil Media, Nostalgic, Pat Garap, VG Koog, or Eamon CR70, Rendered Ghost, Printless, VG6, Sweet Sledgehammer, Smitty B, Spice Wear, Asimares, Teleprompter, D Train, Tiki Dan K, Trek MD, VG Double Down, X, Ken X. Damn, it's faster rap than the new Eminem track. Well, I try to get through them quickly. Yeah, <laughs> it's a long man. list. And if you want to get on that list and listen to me butcher your name quickly, so you don't even hear it. <laughs> um, it's free with Amazon Prime. Just hit subscribe. Um, and it's not free without it. Um, or you can just follow us if you like. That's that's 100% free. Um, kittens. They're so riled up even before you were like, so, during the oh, like yeah. read, you're like, Mar -mar. making them get some cute sounds happening. <laughs> they know that it's treat time. Oh, Thrust is in a nasty mood. Well, hopefully we can make that better with kittens. Yeah, man. Kittens eating treats. Okay, here are. If you want to dole out the sure, treats, I'll, I'll, I'll be the treat uh, doler. I'll be the gargoyle. That's right. Okay, oh, kittens, the, are you the ready? The fiendish look in these cats' Let's get eyes. the score of zero zero on the board. Let's see how Ding. these guys do. Okay, you ready? All right, Atari's off to the races. Remember to throw his in there if he dings it. Oh, yeah, because otherwise he's he's an OP build. Oh, he's, he <laughs> catches it in the air. Oh, oh, Sprite's having some trouble. Atari's going to get two? <gasps> Atari, two oh, for Atari. Dude, Atari. Oh, dude, Atari. One up, Atari. Wow, Sprite is still having trouble making some sound. There he goes. He's found the bell. And Atari, no, got to ring it. Oh, harder. Oh, and Sprite's caught up. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Sprite. You had a good lead, but you lost it. Oh, he's up to three now. Thank you, Esther Mares. Good shirt as well on you. Three, three. Sprite has tied it up. Oh, four, three. Atari keeps his lead. Let's this see. Let's excellent. see this war. Oh, Sprite's a little slow. Come on, Sprite. You got this, he's buddy. He's doing a soft touch. There he goes. Four, four. Atari's doing some solid ringing today. Very solid. A sprite's just not hitting he's not, it. He's, he's, it's the pressure. There we go. He needs more pressure on the bell. That's right. He's just doing a soft touch. Oh, 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 oh he's so soft. Oh, Atari Same misses it. Oh, oh Atari, Atari gets it. buddy. Keeps his lead, 6-5. There we go. Sprite catches up again. But if he stays at this pace, Atari's going to win. Atari, buddy. He's been doing well lately. Oh, oh, that was your nail. You have to hit the... T oh, both at the same time. 7-7. Seven, seven. Sprite is now neck and neck. No, I didn't feed Sprite before the show. He's just... Oh, Sprite oh. is now taking the lead. Oh, he lo we lost the... Uh... Oh, no. It's 8-7 for Sprite. Atari. Atari. He's slow eater. Atari, oh, we got to hustle. Oh, buddy. Oh, Atari was, catches up. Was that both at the same time? No, no. There we go. Sprite is now in the lead at... Game point for Sprite. And, I, and I tossed him an easy one, too. Oh, oh, Atari. It's tied up. This is not looking good for Atari. Oh, and Sprite takes it. Oh, he just passed him at the end there. There we go. 
good game, Atari, but you just couldn't pull it off in the end. There you go. Oh, and give a little prize at the end for both for participation. Right. That was that was a nail biter. Oh my goodness! Good game, kittens. Okay, so we've got a poll question. Oh shit! Video game discussions in social settings. Ooh, okay. So, um, here is the poll, and the answers are, it's the main topic of most of your conversations <laughs> in, <laughs> within your friends, like with your friends or family, You're like, video games, video games, video games, video games. <laughs> uh, number two, it occasionally comes up. Number three, it rarely comes up. Number four, never comes up. Number five, I actively avoid talking about it. <laughs> so it is definitely not the main subject when I'm talking with yeah. my friends or family. Obviously, I do the show. So that's a topic as well. If something big's happening on it or, you know, whatever. Also, you have your outlet. Yeah, this is my... <laughs> like you clear, You're the people... That you, doesn't count for me. That you, can't you, count. You got your outlet. I you do. Know, I it's... talk to people twice a week. <laughs> Uh, blab all about video games. Get it out of my system. Who and also like you, your interest is in this niche category, and you yeah. happen to to open it up to the like the world because yeah. you walk into the Starbucks being like, "Yo, have have you played the new port?" <laughs> of, like it's not gonna happen. They're like, "Who are you?" <laughs> like, "What's a port?" You're like, "Oh, never uh, mind." Now I gotta now I, I gotta sit you down and explain everything right from the beginning. Well, in 1992, Atari discontinued <laughs> most of their uh, gaming and uh, uh, console line. Uh, and then from there on, it's kind of referred to as homebrew. They're like, uh, I'm out. And they're like, so do you so want a this grande a uh, or, or a venti? <laughs> yeah. Uh, a venti. <laughs> and then I just hang my head and go to the waiting area. Um, I would say... Not rarely, just because I do a show, it would be occasionally. But outside of talking about the show, it rarely comes up for me. Yeah. But I'm gonna say occasionally because of the show. How about for you? And I'd do say... you have gaming friends, or are they just friends that don't do gaming? I'm not talking about board gaming. Yeah. Um, or D and D or anything like that. Video game. I'd say we. I, it definitely occasionally comes up, especially like. I think it's because I played a lot of different games. I played like yeah. a lot of genres, and and an era where kind of like you know I like quite common co topic at least from my generation will be like, yo, you remember the N sixty four back <laughs> right. when you did like there's kind of like and some of those the early nostalgia the nostalgia conversation, but also like for me like I am not really one to sort of like talk about the video games I'm playing but if someone brings right. up like a game uh, most of the time I've played like something either adjacent to it or I can find a game that I've played and they've played in yeah. which case I'm, I'm I'm pumped to talk about it <laughs> yeah but it tended and you know and every gamer is kind of different it's neat to sort of learn like there's the COD yeah. kids there's the Halo people there's RPG <laughs> yeah. people there's the Stardew Valley <laughs> Sims you know what I mean there's yeah. all very That's different true. gamers and I played like and there's kind of like the Starcraft like you yeah. know sort of like world and there's people have their genres RTS because they're good at it and, and they like it so they don't want to stray outside of that like i love shooters and platformers that that's my jam yeah. i love them i'll play other games i'll play fps's certain ones like uh uh skyrim stuff hell yeah also fallout stuff but that's like triple a super common everybody plays those because they're mat they're masterpieces right um, but yeah, yeah, everybody has their type of game. And also I know some people in the video game industry or were in the video game industry. So obviously we talk about it then. Yeah. So it does come up. And I'd say I'm like, are you talking with Tanya Darcy Erlen about video games outside the show? Usually in relation to the show. Yeah. Um, but sometimes we go, Oh, I tried, I, I've been yeah, playing like, Cuphead recently. Yeah. Right? You'll pull up like a, like a yeah. kind of sort of new game that's happening, but um, and you talk about it with me sometimes. Yeah. You're like, oh, I watch streams of so and so, or you know, this speed run sometimes. Yeah. We talk about. Yeah. 
Um, but I'll often like save my video game topics for the show because it's like right. it's related to the show. So and everybody's going to be interested in. Yeah. Them too, so right? I, I'll often kind of like I think in some ways it's a it's, it's an like interesting question down, where down. like yeah. it, we'll almost I think on some level avoid talking about video games because we also have this outlet where it's like yeah. Well, this is a setting where it's like kind of encouraged it's a safe space. It's a safe space, <laughs> and also we got like what sometimes three hours of content to fill. It's oh, kind of like true. It's like well let's oh, I gotta save, save it up, man. Well, yeah, you know and. Then there's also lots of things we're interested in, in yeah. like movies and life, what's going on yes. in each other's like personal lives and things like that. So philosophy, lots of topics. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think Carl G says, I'm a bit shy of trying to explain my weird hobby with new people. Yeah. There's like, when I have to talk about what I do on the show, there's some backstory I have to build right, into that. Yeah. It's not just like, Oh, on the PS five, I played this. And it's like, Oh, I get PS five. It's like, no, it's like homebrew, on a 45 year old console and they don't even know what homebrew is it's like okay let's start from the beginning yeah yeah it's it's definitely like a like a niche well, i don't con- know it's kind of like a secret cult oh, <laughs> there you go that's Just the... without the sacrifice more cats yeah than well. normal cults yeah um uh and i also find too that like i'm very interested in like games people are interested in and also consoles because yes. like people who play like the ds and kind of like yes. you know uh, uh what's the the wii that's a very certain yeah. kind of gamer people who are like playstation gamers people who are like kind of more nes Xbox, snes gamers right um pc gamers yeah like, they're all different all kind of different vibes and different things of what people like and i love hearing about like what people's favorite games are talking you know? to somebody who's enthusiastic about something Thing. yeah it's nice <laughs> it's great no matter if it's video games or movies or anything else that enthusiasm is contagious right and they're excited to talk about it so they're gonna give you their best right uh, we have retro game nights as well yeah uh, one's coming up in november hell yeah i'm very excited we haven't had it in a couple of years because of that thing that happened in 2020 things. i don't know what it was something <laughs> something happened everything shut down but yeah uh lately we have a few friends hooked on assembloids and vroom very approachable games yeah. Um, and they also always want to turn on the video music. Oh, S. Ramirez! You have an extra one you can lend me in, indefinitely? Yeah. That was, that's, that was a box. I don't know if I ever explained this. That Atari made that you plug in your stereo into and then goes out to the TV. It's a visualizer from early 80s, I'm guessing. Oh, I want so one so bad. <laughs> it, it's it just makes crazy stuff on your screen uh 1976 oh wow before the 2600 wow okay uh they're very expensive as you can imagine from 1976 um stop selling in yeah. 77 wow yeah and um um music video music with vroom yeah it's like winamp 1.0 with all the visualizations that dance the music yeah but it's it's analog and oh, it's shit. awesome also, um, gamification is such a sort of topic as well around sort of narrative design. This kind of question yes. of like engagement and the way gamification has affected oh, lots of different things. So I also think like gaming and kind of video games is like um, like a philosophical topic as well. And I yeah. find myself engaging in that conversation often of like yeah. what, you know, also this idea of engaging in the kind of simulation that sort of creates a world that you feel comfortable in and like how much time do we engage in this? I find also like I'll talk to people a lot about the philosophical kind of like ideas around and the balancing gaming with your life too and the sort oh, of, yeah, yeah. you know, multiplayer versus, in, you know, kind of yeah. spinning the slot wheel kind of games. There's some very grindy games that are you're kind of just almost. Yeah gambling that's sort of the addiction is something very story based so but i also think there's definitely some memes that can be sent around <laughs> some good old gaming memes you know on july 22nd there will be an atari open event from a local community i i hope i could go oh that's cool uh video music is running from our receiver i have a vinyl setup turntable receiver and tape deck oh Ir- very cool. appropriate with the vinyl and yeah, the atari dude. music atari video music um saying of uh gamification i just remember getting scratch and sniff stickers yeah at, when i was in elementary school it's like oh that's that's a form of gamification you get oh you get a gold star if you that's do right. well it's like i've got five gold stars you could even argue education on some level has a gamification yeah. element to it like this exchange of like tests and scores and things like yeah. it's interesting how much that also in marketing and like the way in which our lives and 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 then also the at least a buzzword at my work is often how gamified are we going to make this how much do we right. lean this in especially in the spaces of 
like interpretation where you're sort of giving information and teaching yeah. how much do you make that a game and how much does that almost corrupt the <laughs> the, the whole system, the whole, the, whole, system. The, whole, the whole interactive experience right? yeah but it's also kind of like of a forest it's like the fucking tree falls in a forest and no one hears who gives a <laughs> shit right yeah. like it's like you do need this level of gamification to engage people. as long as people can interact with it without the gamification and still enjoy themselves that's fine like for example like the new nintendo um theme park is fully gamified like you earn yeah. coins by going through exhibits and like actually playing games and upgrade but that's expected almost in terms of a nintendo theme park and it looks absolutely super fun yeah but it looks like you can enjoy it without participating in that absolutely so uh happy july 1st and july 4th to both oh, our canadian yeah. and american friends coming up this uh weekend it's nice Mm -hmm. I'll be going over to my sister. She has a pool. So. Oh, that's the way to do it. That's I was just telling do. I was just telling James that like my one of my philosophies is to never book a big trip around these big holidays. Oh Stay God. home, hang out with friends. If you want to go camping or yeah. something, like do that on like not one of these prescribed long weekends because every it's time you, you see the news and they're like, they always show shots of the airport. It's just packed. People like sleeping on the floor. <laughs> Pl airplane flights canceled beaches like, are just why do i want to participate full of people yeah. every campground is like, like go the weekend before or the weekend after put one of your holiday days if you have them sorry americans That's um, right. <laughs> uh towards that make that the long weekend and, yeah. and beaches are free and open and everything like that so it's much better but happy holidays for everybody um i'm just excited that i don't work and i'm just gonna enjoy the weekend most people's that's, bonuses that's, that's yeah. my that's my plan <laughs> we have a package to open let's see what it is well i know what it is but you guys don't uh let's see I'm very excited about this this is a long time coming if it is what i think it is <laughs> yeah it's wrapped in oh, wrapped in stuff let's open it up oh, can anybody guess what it is they probably can't well one person might guess if they Ooh, five week vacation thrust hell yeah man. yeah uh europe europe has the good vacations it is the final sign I needed. Is it all? Oh. The Atari Link sign. Now, I bought all the other signs like a year ago or something for like the 2600, 7800, Jaguar, 8 bit, 5200, but he didn't have this one. So I reached out to him <laughs> maybe nine months ago saying, hey, you thinking about making a Link sign? Because uh, it's the only one I'm missing. And he's like, ah, oh, maybe, not really. And then I kept bugging him and bugging him. <laughs> and he's like, and then he finally gets back to me. Hey, I'm going to make that link sign for you. And uh, this is the first one off the line. That's great. Um, so now I can finally put up a proper link sign. And it looks so nice and shiny. Oh, my really God. clean. Yeah. Looks absolutely beautiful. And it's... Uh, it's very, very close shiny. My eyes for the, yeah. Oh, there we go. There we go. No, you don't have to close. There's no autofocus. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Nice and shiny. So, I'll be putting that up next time we play Lynx Games. Very nice. So, this, if you are interested in these, it's not an ad because I had to pay full retail for that. <laughs> Especially <laughs> shipping import. Actually, no import to Canada for that. Um, the TD Shop. So, he has his own webpage and he sells on eBay as well so if you like those signs he has tons of other ones like pitfall and game specific things so there you go completely unlicensed <laughs> <laughs> so get it while you can um some other let's get to the news now da, 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 da. web page boom uh, Andrew Davey posted this uh, last night, I guess. Yeah. Uh, it's now the 22nd anniversary of the first release of my game QB for the 2600. I still, uh, it's still an okay little game from the dawn of home brewing for the 2600, but the time has come. I feel that 20 plus years is time enough. And it's time for QB 
Am I saying that right? I always forget. I bet it's QB. Um, I have no idea. It, or maybe it's Cube. Oh my God. He's going to kill me. Um, to permanently retire. Uh, so I've asked Albert to withdraw Cube. QB? Cube. From the store, and that will be the end of it. Many thanks to the hundreds of people who purchased a copy over the years. Still dear to my heart, and actually for a 4K game, it's doing some pretty nifty playfield manipulation. I'm feeling that it's done its dash, so to speak, and better to go out smiling than just be a game that sits around forever in the corner gathering dust. And uh, S. Ramirez is the first to post. He's got his two copies there. Uh, a holiday limited uh, version of it and the uh, regular version of it. Um, uh, Cube was the act actually the first homebrew I took notice of back in 2001. It's a fun game. So a very early homebrew. Um, and uh, a certain date when it retires, let's say Sunday, July 23rd, um, with the rest of the games that are going out of the store. So this is your chance. If you don't have Andrew Davies' uh, Cube, QB, <laughs> it's going <laughs> to kill me. Uh, then this is your chance to get it right now. So go for it. Uh, it is a very cool game. Um, also related to that and related to uh, the uh, games disappearing from the store. Uh, Pac-Man Plus posted on uh, Tuesday morning. Uh, here are the most full recent ROMs of the ports that I've done that will be unavailable soon. I ask that you still support Al and get the games while you can, but the ROMs are, and he posted, I think, pretty much every single game that he's ever made for the Atari 7800. So if you want it in the box, on cartridge, definitely head over to the stores. There's a sale on, 10% off everything, plus 5% more if you're a subscriber. That's right. So I picked up four um of bob's games that i didn't have we gotta grab them for sure now you have time, to right dude you, you, you gotta go for it um but if you already have them or if um you just want the binaries um for just to have them here they all are in uh, a lot of pal versions and ntsc versions so there you go um so go for it da, 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 da. And uh, also, I'm going to say that's at the end, too, but I don't know how many people make it to the end, especially on YouTube. Um, <laughs> this is the last show before our su short summer break. It's just two weeks. We usually take a short summer break because nobody's developing anything, and I run out <laughs> of games, at least new games, anyway. I it's, also always... it's also good to have, um, you know, a break Breaks. as well. Yeah. You know, it's... Um... I can go out into the sun, touch some grass, enjoy myself. That's important, man. Yeah, touch grass. Everybody out Touch there, grass, put, all the developers are touching grass because they're not making anything. Very <laughs> few. Usually it's like five to ten updates a day that I put because I keep track of all the games that are released and updates to those games. And now it's like one every one or two days. Oh, yeah. That's it's just slowed because people go on vacation. It's they're natural. Outside, they're enjoying themselves. So, you know, I just did do it at the same time. It's great. Have some, uh, have a break. Um, there will still be After Darks. Smudge scheduled After Darks is a bunch of games that we want to play. Um, just getting high scores and stuff like that. Um, but we will officially return on Tuesday, July 18th. I think that Friday is not your day, but the Friday after that. That makes sense. Day. You have a big break. That's three okay. three weeks for Ellen, but that's okay. Normally it's two weeks, so yeah. it's like <laughs> every so maybe four weeks then. Yeah. Yeah. Every um uh every second week. Every yeah. every show for me is a two week break. That's true, that's <laughs> true. That's not too bad. Mm. Last year you had the twenty six hundred marathon to fill in. Oh, did I do that in the summer last year? That was a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> Playing every single classic twenty six hundred game. Were you, uh, you weren't there for that, were you? I don't think so, because no. I was, it was definitely in COVID times, right? Oh, yeah, that's probably why we did it. We like tried we to do, do I'm sure, we did some remote shows, but it just wasn't the we same. Uh, like it just, it's hard. It's it's kind of a, it, rather than trying to figure out this, like, new medium, we were just kind of like, oh, let's wait until. It just, that slight delay just, oh, yeah. look at that. Oh, yeah. Bad cats got a hold of the toilet paper. Yeah, it's all over the floor. Happens. Oh, well. Um, yeah, it's it's hard to do that because you're not seeing the video game. You're seeing it on delay, and it's it's yeah. so challenging. And it becomes more like a talk radio show, and like rather than us playing yeah. like games. And we're yeah. here to play games, you know. It's kind of yeah. like, the, and you're here to watch us play games. Yeah, and not 
not talk. Well, talk to. Yeah, but like. Um, Carl G says this year you should do the seventy eight hundred collection. It's a much smaller list. I actually have it on the schedule. Does the oh, seventy eight hundred? Dude, James is on it. You gotta oh. trust in the James. James yeah. is. Uh... Well, keep, keep the suggestions though. <laughs> oh, the top one hundred homebrew game show. Well. I don't like ranking things. Yeah, it's just so hard. Also, especially with let, kind of art that's so yeah, subjective so and like, subjective. and it's also always your personal taste. And expressing yeah. your personal taste is one thing. It's good to like do it, but, but, but also like people love those top ten lists. Oh god! Man. Like, but I I do have a series that I haven't revisited in a while, which is my favorites in no particular order. Yeah, um, which I want to continue on. Top ten platformers. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, not top like... ten. <laughs> My favorite part. Part one, <laughs> two, three. To watch. But we do. Oh, where is it? No, I have a seventy-eight hundred scheduled for the anniversary. Um. Oh, there. Maybe, maybe you haven't plugged it in yet. I have it, but I'm going to do it for its um, some anniversary of the 7800. I don't know why I can't find it. Um, so when did the 7800 come out? Because that's when I'm going to do it. Uh, wiki. Um, because one of my favorite YouTube channels is doing a hunt top 100 movies. Cinefix. Yeah. And they're doing it for the next two years. <laughs> One movie a week they're going to discuss. It's, and it's like, oh my God, that's so awesome. It's so awesome. It's also like oh, so brutally subjective too, but like I love it. Yeah. I'm, all, I'm all about it. Okay, so it's not for a while. We're going to do it in uh, 2026. Um. <laughs> <laughs> this is a plan. Three years. Don't worry, guys. You just got to wait. It's yeah. on the roster three years from now. Three years. Less than three years. It's in May because it came out in uh, May 1986. There you go, in the U.S. So that's when it's going to be. Um, we're going to play every single classic... Oh, my throat today is bad. Just getting over something. Um, classic uh, 7800 game. And we're and then on the next anniversary of the 2600... Possibly the discon... No, we missed that. Um, in, in the next year after that, in... 2027 we'll do all the prototypes that never got made that were going to get made Hope i love, I'm how, you're like, to see it I love how you're like why is this not on the agenda oh because it's, it's so far in the now. distance <laughs> yeah exactly was, was that a promise to continue the show until at least 2020 question <laughs> question mark uh i don't know uh, it depends if you guys keep showing up. Yeah. <laughs> and keep making games, because that's really the, the... If there's no games to play, then... Yeah, yeah. if there's a community... Yeah. Um, I, don't I, see, community, I don't see why so. James, James wouldn't be wouldn't I'm be doing the, it. I've invested all this, this yeah. time and effort into setting all this stuff up. And, I could see you, yeah. like, um, scaling back and maybe doing, like, a one show a week if, like, you were, like, <sighs> busy. Or having, like... I could see you also taking a couple months off if you're, like, in the deep production yeah. of something. But I don't see you stopping. Like, mm -hmm. I see there might, there might be, like... Periods of boom and bust, but like yeah, yeah. But this is my fun time. This yeah. is, I do this for fun. This is great. Um, if anything, ramping it up. <laughs> yeah, man. It's awesome. Oh, seven. My key are your keyboards still acting up? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Twenty twenty seven. I actually think That's your plan, like mistake least. of twenty twenty question mark was is even actually, better. It's better because it's, it's like you're like you know. We should put twenty twenty X. Yeah. Futuristic could be nine. Could be four. Could be anything. Um, I, and then we'll return on Tuesday, July 18th. So there, there you go. Um, lots of great things coming up after the break. Lots of great plans. But now it is, uh, before we take off into the games, let's take a look at the poll results. Um, coming out number one, it rarely comes up at 46%. Um, and then... It occasionally comes up with 26%, never comes up 20 and I actively avoid talking about it 6%. And nobody makes it the main topic of their conversations. <laughs> it's a bit much. That would be a bit much if you bring it up every time you talk to somebody, they'll be like, that's enough, guy. Yeah. You talk about way too much. Yeah. 
Okay. If you got if you got it a, a shared interest, it's one thing. Yes, and then you'd be like, well, this is my relationship with that person is video games. Um, yeah. One time at Bandcamp. Okay. Now it is time for the first game we're going to be playing, which is Arty. This is an exclusive work in progress Ooh. update of RT, which is an acronym for Archaeological Rescue Team International. <laughs> I don't know if you've played this. I don't think so. I, we'll, we'll find out. We'll find we out. We'll find out. So let me load it up. And switch it over. Switch over the screen and give Erlen the controls. Oh, the powers. You have all the power. Hmm, okay, cool. Let's. Okay. Oh, dude, this Harry Box. Public demo to Walk Like an Egyptian, June 2023. Demo recommended for use with a A7800 emulator 5.2 or better. 7800 a GD cartridge, which is not for sale yet, but it will be. Dragonfly cartridge, which is what we're playing it on, uh, Mr. 7800 Core, or the Argon emulator. Uh, this demo isn't compatible with Pro System based emulators. They are ancient. Don't even bother with them. Uh, Concerto, because the ROM size is too big. Hokey uh, has music issues with it. Bop System, pokey glitches. I usually use the Bop System because it's quite compatible, but not with everything. Um, JS7800, music and graphics glitch. So just be prepared for that. On other systems, emulators, your mileage may vary. So go for it. Press the button. Pokey Detected. Oh, what a great shit. graphic. That is That's beautiful. Awesome. It's a real like looking chip, actually. Yeah, really good. Uh, okay, press the button. A Muddy Vision Muddy reproduction. Vision. Oh, I love that logo. That's really beautiful. It is really nice. It's a um, uh, homage to Activision. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And there's a lot of other visions as well. Spectre Vision. Uh, in that era. Oh, let me get, oh, let me get, let me get the volume. Archaeological good. Rescue Team International. Oh, yeah. We've got a fellow smoking that's... Uh, You'll have to put a warning on this. Warning, smoking. You ever seen those movies yeah. uh, where they like... <laughs> smoking. smoking, drinking, mild violence, right. suggestive content. It's hard to have a cowboy, though, without a cigar, you it's know? Just it's just traditional. Uh, it's part of the whole thing. I love this, like, okay, I'll, I'll jump. Should I just jump in and see, or should I look uh, at the instructions? Let's go to credits, because we haven't actually looked at this since, uh... Uh, 2022, I think. Uh, Artie is inspired by the Atari 2600 game Hero by John Van Ryzen. He just released a brand new 2600 game. Very cool. 1984. Very daunting. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Code and graphics, Lewis Hill. Music, Bobby Clark. Code guru, Mike Sarna. Music help, Matt Smith. T-Boss. Mrs. A. I'm at T. Testing, Crossbow S. Ramirez and Trebor. Build 129, June 2023. Okay. Press the button. Uh, let's go into the options. So you can turn on and off the music. Uh, there's CRT mode, which I'm not sure what that is yet. And you can change the sound effects to high, medium, or low. We're going to keep them on high. And just press the second button to return. Cool. And I think the instructions are the same, but we'll just breeze through them. Press the right. Oh, no, keep going in there. Okay, it's a instruction. And it's got some nice animation. Oh, I like this character on Shark. the right. This monocle gentleman. Oh, yeah. Uh, CRT mode, I'm not sure it does anything, does it? Yes, it does. But I have some instructions. Okay, keep going. And get some great instructions here. Some defense, some dynamite. Oh, oh dynamite, yeah. Good. Some dangerous beasts. Yeah, snakes are the ones you gotta look out for because they don't show themselves right away. I know, I know a uh, guy who doesn't like snakes. Oh. Famous character that mm. this might be. I'm just. I don't. I don't want. I don't want to suggest anything. Don't but. say it. <laughs> okay. And two. Next stop, South America. Excellent. Ooh. Flight leaves in ten minutes. Okay. That's we gotta, dude, we gotta get on this flight. Let's get on. Okay. This flight. Jump into it and Artie Charter MU MV seventy eight hundred, wow. en route to South America. Okay. So. Don't press the second button yet. Um, so just 
figure out the controls. There's left and right for walking. Up is flying. There's gravity pulls you down. I don't know. Can you pull down and go down quick? Mm, it doesn't really, really seem to make much of a difference. And the first button is your laser, which will kill enemies. And you can use it against a wall, but it takes forever to, to disintegrate the wall. What you need to do is get close to the wall, press the second button, and then run away with the diamond. That makes sense. Yeah. Beautiful graphics on this. And so then you I do can... have a time limit. This is reflected by like my power. Is is going down. It's kind of a time limit. At this... Yo, who's? Whoa. Yeah, that looks like an indie kind of character. So, so did I lose? Uh, nope. That's your goal is to rescue. Nope. Use the dynamite. <laughs> Gotta learn to use the dynamite. This one you have to use. That. There you go. Expert already. Um, so, um, updates. For Artie, a lot of work has been done to add in the structure to support additional themed areas. Uh, the second themed area is Egypt. Tile set here is complete and the engine is updated. I just need to build out the levels. The third themed area graphics are almost done. All things being considered, the game is probably around 60% complete. Now, just as a, as a hint, always fly down the left-hand side of a... Because sometimes the lights are always on the right-hand side. Oh, the right -hand side. Whoa. Oh, shit. oh, he didn't kill the bat. The bat's still there. That's fine. Killed it with my last life. <laughs> That's right. Sacrifice, make the ultimate sacrifice for yourself. Yeah, and there's going to be passages that you can't get down, right? That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So it's a s small maze. It's, it gets more mazy. That makes a fly down the left. That's a lot of sense. And I got my character here. Wow, cool! Functionally, the engine is mostly done with a few features to add. Changes for this demo. Uh, functioning open... A functioning options page. Uh, with sound effects volume levels, music on and off, and a CRT mode with the busy background graphics turned off. Oh, okay, so it... The CRT mode simplifies the graphics, if, if that, I'm getting it correctly. Is that what it uh, means? Uh, muddy? Lewis? Um, Egypt levels. Only two, but it's enough to show. So we'll be able to show some Egypt levels. Oh, the Yo! snake. Watch it. There you go. No, thanks. That's Indy. That's a whip or something. Definitely. It's a lion taming. <laughs> New level types with horizontal levels. Oh, you hit the light again. You have to stick to the left. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize that that's a, like a like a function. That yeah. I... What's going on over here? Oh, that's a lava lava wall. Any red walls? Oh, will interesting. Kill you. Okay, cool. I, I'm yeah. still in the experimentation phase. Yeah, still learning. I didn't tell you about the lava. That's okay. Walls. I'm learning. Oh, lava wall. Ah, uh, terribly sorry, old bean, but we've run out of H suits. Jolly good oh, try. Oh no. That okay. Means game okay. over. But you could do it better this time. Definitely. Stronger. Faster. You know about dynamite. Uh, level end screen for the first area. Uh, sound effects in the plain screen. New intro screen with pokey and save key found graphics. I didn't see save key. Oh, never mind. Save key detection is currently saved. Uh, lots of code enhancement and fixed bugs. I did notice, um, I'm sure Lewis is already aware of this. Um, when you get to the bottom of the screen, when your character gets to the bottom, on the very, very bottom edge, bottom line, it gets uh, sparkly. And just for the bottom edge of it. Oh, yeah. There's an old hat at Hero now. Not, not at all. Hardy. I'm still sort of learning. Luckily, this is... Um, Oh, Batoko asked, does the helmet laser use extra power? No. Please turn down the game volume. Sorry. Sorry, friends. It looked like it was okay. Thank you for letting me know. Or disable the music if that's the only way. Music is only on or off. Maybe I need to turn down my pokey. There's a spider there. I don't think. Ooh, I don't know. Maybe you went down the wrong path completely. Try the other side. Oh, no. Lights are out. 
So it'll just fumble in in the dark there here. There you go. Oh. Yeah, there you go. All right. Ooh, okay, it. what a what a war that was. <laughs> yeah. Holy cow. Oh, he hit the light again. How, what, I don't even know where the light is. What's the mechanic Just, for that? Uh, it's a light that lights up the room, but... Oh, I thought I was going to get it. It sucks. And it's um, usually when you go down a level, and it's always on the right-hand side of the wall. So whenever you go down a passageway like this one, stick to the left-hand side so you don't oh, kick okay. it out. Oh, okay. So I see. Hopefully see, there's the light, and you didn't kick it oh, out. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So that's. I, I really don't want to be kicking out any more lights. Erlen is a lamp hater. That's what Muddy says. I'm a lamp hater. I like lamps. Lights operating in the dark. I'm a lamp enjoyer. Oh, I think I'm making it fart. Yeah, you're already making it fart. Oh, but I think that was like. That's an, that's an automatic, yeah. Oh, we got a snake here. Snakes. Oh, oh I see. The left hand side. Oh, oh shit. Gotta care be careful. Gotta get close, but not too close. There you go. We gotta get this guy. Left hand side. There you go. There you go. And if there's a wall, the rule I use is always get rid of the wall and go down that passage. That makes sense. What? There's a lady? Warcraft. Hey! Or. Somebody. That makes sense. <laughs> that resembles it's a cosplay. Or I'm, gonna, cosplay. I'm gonna go left. Yeah. There you go. Oh, I'm that's a really good it. hack. Yeah, get rid of that bat first, then the wall. Yeah. Nice. Oh, oh. shit. Oh, I gambled. A... Gambled and won. <laughs> oh, you shot it out. Oh, oh I didn't realize that was something yeah, that you option. could do. I'm gonna just. Uh... Too close. Oh shit, that makes sense. Of yeah. course you're gonna blow yourself up with dynamite. <laughs> yeah. It's just how life works, man, sometimes. Yeah, one day. Hey, I made the right choice. You did. Nice. That nice one's guy. a forced choice. You can't do anything about that. Which is always nice, because then you don't have to worry about going the wrong way. Nice, good moves. And uh, Muddy Funster has improved this from uh, the game that it was inspired from that in Hero, there's Pitfall Harry, in Hero, oh. there's a pause when you press up to fly. It was infuriating. It's so Man, hard. Man, really nice to know about this mechanic of these lights, because I didn't realize that was what was going on. Yeah, it feels like most of the time if you can destroy the... Uh... Yeah, it's always the right route. See, that way you would have knocked out the light, and you'd have to go through a wall. And that was no option. Yeah. Snakes. Ooh. Yo. Oh, watch out! It's lots of lava walls. Hot well, it's walls. like I can't seem to. You go see, to the right. You see no. what I mean? I'm actually trying to like. Have to go to the left then, or go down the other passage. Oh. oh uh, there's a, some issues that are open and are on the list of features to add or bugs to fix. Collisions need reviewing all around. Wall needs to needs a damaged graphic. That would be cool. Oh no. Not a time to lose my life, dude. No. That sucks. Creatures can be shot through walls, which you did. I saw once. Will be fixed, so you're not supposed to kill a creature through a wall. I don't know if he's gonna... I guess you would restrict the laser when it hits the wall and make it shorter. Or just... Yeah, that would make, 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 make the most sense. Uh, the sound effects volume doesn't control doesn't work 100% of the time if you set it to low. It's on the fixed list. Okay. The collisions on the Egypt are a bit janky, especially on the spiked walls. The Egypt version of the lava walls. It's on the list of stuff to address. Overall, it's a typical work in progress demo build. Expect odd stuff to happen. There will likely be glitches. Dude, so far, not really too many glitches. It's been really it's pretty, solid. pretty seamless and solid yep. game, man, so far. I'm so really enjoying water this. At the bottom there. <laughs> yeah, I'm enjoying... I like the sort of vari variation in gameplay, the challenge. It's also yeah. neat to, like... Um, now that I'm understanding the mechanics a bit better, it, there's something kind of, like, maze-like about it, which is really, like... Yes. It's just a slight maze, yeah. And now that I'm, like, understanding it, I'm actually seeing some of these levels. <laughs> Without being in the dark, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no dark for you. Um, and if everybody's wondering, I'm just going to reiterate what he said um, in uh, Lewis's statement the other day. Artie is uh, one that could be problematic. I've talked to Al about Artie. The assets used in the game are completely new and original, recreated by me. 
fact, uh, some are derivatives of surplus EXO assets from World 3 and unused, unrealized World 6. They are not even based off the original, except for the main character, but yes, generic guy with a jetpack jet with much more detail. Night Driver versus Pole Position. Artie has music, cutscenes, way more graphic, themed areas, etc. Artie plays slower than the original with a different field of controls, which a lot of f folks commented on. Based on that, we've agreed that Artie would not fall foul of the change in store rules, so it should appear in due course. That said, I will probably make a few more tweaks to further distance Artie from Hero, so in effect, it's a generic hero-like rather than a port. So this one um, should, like, 99% uh, coming to the Atari Age store, so no worries about that. Yeah, it's a, a, what a fun little game, too. I'm really enjoying this. Yeah, it's... It's, it's getting kind of lost in focus. I realize I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm not just... It's, it can get hypnotic after a while. You quite like, a, quite, a, quite an you addictive little game, man. Yeah. And also, also need to like have this sort of like it is like that classic old kind of magic of these sort of like older style games where you're just like you're like damn it I want to play it again to yeah, see if I, I can like beat this you not know make that same mistake I did yeah um, where like the challenge of it is like yeah like the year like, that's so cool I feel like there's only one option <laughs> yes there is <laughs> the one with the two things that you have to get rid of. learning so much though like on, on replay yeah i think i'm gonna bring the chat over this window that's a good idea because yeah that the um currently james's ipad um laptop. uh laptop is is needs a couple not doing so couple well. details done to it so we're, yeah we're we normally have we normally we chat off of that so right now i can't really it's happening oh i'm pressing the wrong button that would help there we go. Let's get some font size happening. Abs uh, Packlander says, absolutely love all the detail uh, in the character designs and animation. Oh yeah, absolutely. So this is, oh, there you go. Nice. Level seven, kicking ass. And three lives. Yeah, nice. and the only life I lost was that, uh, that, that mistake. Oh, the first level. Yeah, <laughs> where, where just I just... total accident, yeah. We're just like nice moves. Right, you're making sure to eradicate all, <laughs> all dangers, but it's good just in case you accidentally. Well, just for the points, even and the too, points, yeah. you know. So there are extra lives, but I. So yeah, you do want to get those lives when you can. Uh, Carl G says, uh, "Oh, Bobby's music adds to the hypnotic feel. Yeah, the music is great." It doesn't sound, it doesn't feel repetitive. Well, here's some horizontal stuff. Nice. There we go. Oh, nick nice. of time, dude. Holy shit. Well done. You did it. Is that Past the game? level one. Oh, no. that's level one. Okay, cool. That's everyone rescued in South America. Hey, you're welcome, South America. South American nice. hero. Good job. Artie, Charter, MV7800. <sighs> Egypt, cool. Oh, to Egypt. This is all new. Nobody's seen this before. Ooh, okay, look so at that spiked right. wall, yeah, dude. Yeah, there you go. Okay, I wonder if the same patterns are true. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. dude. I want to see what that urn's all about. It's nothing. It's nothing? Okay. I'm still going to go. Maybe you can I'm yeah, still gonna go, go investigate it. Nice. Nice urn. Very nothing. Nice. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that was close enough. I didn't think it would be. Me neither. As soon as I placed it, I didn't. That creature. So good. That sounds like another urn. Oh, what is okay. that chain there? What is that? I guess, don't, don't, no. Nope, we can't get there. Wow. I love this. It is something classic about like Egypt, well. dude. This is oh, something yeah. about like. It's so different. Is this pillar? Am I able to? There seems to be some sort of like general rules though. Always go on the left if there's a thing that you can destroy. Careful those walls. I think you'll have to go up and over. Oh, what? Did... Oh, that's a pillar? Can you walk? Don't hit that wall. Oh, maybe you will have to go down that side, yeah. It's neat that it's breaking its, uh, the rules that I feel like I've come to learn. Oh. I think you have to lay it and then fly up. Oh, see, I broke the rules, but it might be the only option. Oh, we're doing pretty good there. Oh, oh but my, out of time. Dude, my life is... Damn. Took too oh, long. Oh, we have to start over. Yeah, it's 
a bigger, bigger area. Bigger map, more labyrinthian. Yeah. Like, no like checking out vases this time. Oh, <laughs> see there, I can just, I can like save a lot of time by just, just falling, you know? Yeah. Okay, this is good. Well, it, the time factor is playing in like much more deeply it now is. that it's like a later. And I find that with um, Hero as well, that as the levels, and you know which way to go now, <laughs> levels go on, the, the mazes are bigger and bigger, right? Oh, it went off really quick. Ooh. It just it instantly went off. Okay, let's do this. Too slow. Snakes are very forgiving on the um, Odyssey 2 port. They move super fast and almost all the way across the path, making them very difficult. Uh, yes, the red walls are deadly to the touch. So you don't want to touch the red walls at all. Such a like. cool, <laughs> such a cool style and setting. You know what's so interesting is like those Lucas sort of like IPs. Yeah. You know, like they they there was just so much development for Star Wars, but very little actually for Indiana Jones. Sounds which like is you watched Red Letter Media. No, I didn't. <laughs> they just discussed uh, Temple of Doom. Oh, and I, all of this as well. Oh, I just know this funny. was, but I but I didn't watch it, Seems but that's. Like guys. <laughs> well, but but that's just, and I think they did like the. It's interesting that the uh, the kind of spiritual successors to the Indiana Jones franchise weren't the actual Indiana Jones, like um, mm. uh, the the uh, uh, oh god, what the hell are those games called? They're PS um, exclusives, and they're like uh, Nathan Drake is the lead. Oh, Uncharted. Yeah, the Uncharted is kind of that is the like those right. are the Indiana Jones games. I mean, right. the Lara Croft games and those kinds of things. But it's interesting that like. Um, uh, that like it's cool to see these settings because you just don't actually see as much of them, you know? No, yeah, and they are definitely, uh, uh, the Uncharted is definitely firmly placed in this kind of world, right? Well, that kind of, th those feel like what, um, Indiana, you know, you're sort of like searching for like treasures and these yeah. kinds of things. It's like, and it's just interesting that like it took so long for us to actually get like what I would say our Indiana Jones game, which is those. Yeah. Um, because you'd think the setting would be so rich for, um, gaming, right? Like, oh, sneaking in to do stuff, and, like, your I mean, gun and your whip, and, like, and it's weird, even, like, the Castlevania franchise with the whip. Yeah. You know, like, it's, there's always been this, like... It, the it, whip will be forever associated with Indiana Jones. Yeah. It's just so iconic, right? Have you seen any of those movies recently? Um, well... Funny enough, I didn't see Indiana Jones, uh, or sorry, um, the first one, uh, until about 12 years ago. Oh, wow. And it was an interesting experience because everyone's seen it, right? And uh, I thought it held up exceptionally well. Yeah. Like, it was so good. Um, and I'd seen the other ones, though, which is kind of funny. <laughs> but I'd never <laughs> seen. Uh, the first one. It's um, and uh, I loved it. It was so good. Yeah, they're, they're such special movies. I also think though that like me and my friend will often joke about like um, uh, we'll kind of ironically like sing the Indiana Jones theme <laughs> yeah. because for us there's sort of this funny thing where he like shows up like destroys monuments. Do you <laughs> yes. know what I mean? Just like That's like right. wrecks everything. This kind of white guy and then he's like in the end he walks away and he's like he gets the girl and he's like I really did some good. <laughs> Meanwhile the monuments have been destroyed sure. this like sacred tomb. Oh, yeah. This has been pierced. He like destroys the ceiling and like well, kicks over a thing. The white savior thing. <laughs> right. and, and, like even like um uh, uh holy grail or he just like our last crusade he like goes in to like this like ancient tomb of this knight and then just immediately ditches the body <laughs> to like hide under like it's just he's in some ways the funny thing about Indiana Jones he's destroyed more monuments than he's ever saved oh yeah but you gotta get that really expensive uh, <laughs> rare item out of there and this at is, the expense of everything and then, and then he always walks away being like the coolest hero ever yeah. it's like da da da, da. <laughs> so there's something kind of like amazing about this guy too where he just he he is I'm out. um he is just like on one hand like the coolest guy in the world but on another hand it's also like especially especially temple of doom all these like indigenous cultures he's just like <laughs> bullying oh god yes 
uh, when they released indie films on Blu-ray a couple years ago, it was the first time the full version of Temple of Doom was released in the UK, and boy, is much more brutal than the theatrical UK cut. Yeah, UK is pretty sensitive to violence. There's also like a they banned Clockwork Orange. Well, it was self-banned, but um, <laughs> for many, many, many years. There's also some sus. Di- there's some sus dialogue in um, the first one. Do you remember the scene where he first talks to Marion, and she's like, she refers to like she was like. I was a kid, and he's like, you knew what you were doing. Oh, God. And, and when you look back, you realize that apparently the backstory is Indy was, like, in his, like, 30s, and they oh. and started their relationship when she was, like, 15. Oh. And, and like, and for his line to be like, she was like, I was a kid, you abandoned me. He's like, you knew what you were doing. It's like, yeah. yo, <laughs> Indy. That's so hard. Yeah, that's kind of gross. But it's but also that is classic in that sort of like that genre of those nineteen fifties sort of like leading men like yeah. that, that 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 time period of classical kind of cinema what like that was you know it, 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 it's harking back to those old leading men like Wrong it was way. not not uncommon in those films to see just like oh this hysterical lady will smack her you're like oh, yo God, this yes. is not good but it's kind of interesting how it, like parts of it are so contemporary and also but it also still holds some of that old school like kind of like stuff that but but also the problem is is that despite all my criticisms they're also just like they slap so hard they're fucking they're indiana jones man it's like it's oh yeah some of the best stuff that's been made in the genre you know especially that first one oh my god no oh i still have a wife oh god i'm out of dynamite i have to blast my way through this and i and i have no time left and i have oh yeah you got this you got this (sighs) oh my god no no, no, I think I. Oh shit! I got an extra life. Okay, okay, I think good. It, it counted down. I think you got it. I think. I think so. Yeah. No, this is new. This is new. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, um, um. Yeah, they're really interesting to revisit, though. Hey, uh, those are the. It's, yeah. It's a, also, just like adventure films with that sort of adventurous spirit is something that like. Blockbusters tried to do for so long that yeah. just to catch that feeling. There's a lot of imitations of it that like kind of pale in comparison. <laughs> yeah, it, it he really captured the spirit of those old, old serial films. Yeah, and um, just the, and just this lives. quest, right? The literally like they're almost like RPGs. The quest for the yeah. item, you know, and they're simple, and it's and the Nazis the very are attacking them. You know? Very it's clear the, bad guy. <laughs> yeah. The, the great old the Nazis are also it's a, it's a great pool because it's just like <laughs> there's no question that the these items shouldn't land in the hands of Nazis. You know? <laughs> Ooh, you're, right. it's getting um tight with your uh, dynamite. You're out of dynamite and now. Time. Oh, this is, it this is getting close. challenging. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Very challenging. This. Like your resources. There we Did go. Did you do it? Oh, hell yeah, dude. I say, Jolly, good show. You've completed demo two. Well, dear fellow, there has been a lot of talk of ports just lately. That's funny. Dude, yo, <laughs> is hell? that really what he said? <laughs> yo. I do rather like a good tawny. <laughs> oh, the drink. Oh, I'm letting you God, know. Bro, dude. That's so funny. It's 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 begging us. It's like <laughs> yeah. it. So I do want to assure you that Artie will be unaffected. You see, we're not a port. More of an inspired creation, so to speak. A few tweaks, and the show will inevitably go on. Toodle pip for now. That's right. Now, um, Erlen had a topic that I think is very interesting um, that's side adjacent to ports as it relates to movies. Yeah. And we'll get into that. Um, once we get into the next, game, yeah, we gotta we get to we, we gotta get the, the flow game. going. Yeah, but that is very very fun. What a cool game, man! I'm really I really enjoy that gameplay. I could play yeah. tons of levels of this, man. Yeah, like honestly, like this is one of those games where like I there'd be no limit to the amount of levels. I think it's, the it's an infinite kind of thing, and I, I really want to see like a level creation system for this because it's it's basically building blocks of walls, enemies, um, you know. Just you could place them on the screen wherever you want. Is begging for a, a, a development kit of of making your own levels. And the settings are classic. Like you know, and there's so much potential. Like it would be interesting to do like um, like India or like China. Yes. You can pick these places. I wonder which other world. Antarctica do. would be Ooh, cool. Ice. You know, there's so much oh. cool potential for like. I dread it saying this, but a 
slippery level. Yeah, like uh, going into like an, an like... ice tomb, and you're like, and the, and the dynamite like helps like break apart these ice walls. Oh yeah, cracks the ice walls. There's just a lot of cool potential, and I think I like the um, uh, I like too that you get lulled into this kind of there's some rules that you pick up on the first level, yes. like always go to the left, blow up the thing. Yeah. But what's interesting is that now that it's getting harder, we would like run out of dynamite and go. Now yes. what do we do? Yeah, there's um, just enough dynamite to do a certain path, or you have to, where some of them I had to blast the walls. Also, immediately picked it up and understood it. It's very, it's it's yeah, very simple intuitive. in a good way. Like, I'm like, dynamite, but also, like, by playing the game, I learn the rules very quickly. Yeah. Thank God you're here to let me know about this light. I yeah. wouldn't have known about the light <laughs> otherwise. Like, Why is it all dark? Yeah, and then, like, but what's neat about it is because of that light mechanic. In the instructions, it's there. Yeah. You would have, but we blasted through those. But in that, because of that light mechanic, on replaying, I then get better at it, yeah. and then I can, like, learn, and I can actually, literally, on my first playthrough, there's a lot of levels I didn't actually see, but yeah. then when I play it again, you sort of like you see them. It reminds me a lot of like those um those older school kind of NES games like um They're Castle of Darkbringer. Yeah, like Castlevania, <laughs> you know, where yeah. it's like you're kinda of grinding through and you die and you go back to the beginning and you gotta like and you get better like, and better each time. Yeah, you're like using I can... your weapons and Avoiding things when you don't need to. Like, I can ace level one, level two is a bit tricky. And then also, it's one of those games, too, where, like, if you die at the worst time, you're like, reset, I need all my lives, you know? Like, because if you're wanting to Rage actually reset. beat the game, you you have to, like, uh, so it's, yeah, it's very cool old school stuff, man. Oh, yeah. Mars? Yes, dude. We have a oh. Mars level. Oh, nice. Space uh, level. Oh. That's probably the last one because he has to blast off into space. That's right. And also in classic Indiana Jones fashion, right? Like, you know, the in kingdom of the crystal skull. Well, the, yeah. oh, this I was thinking Indian space. But... <laughs> <laughs> UFOs and aliens yeah. and, and all that not, stuff. Not many people enjoyed that part of it. Yeah, well, I think there was. I actually kind of like. There's been magic throughout the whole. I like. Series, I like right? the core concept. I just think like him, you know, the him swinging like his son swinging on like monkey oh, vines. No. And, you know, they just there was you know that was taking it one step. Too nuke far. the fridge, jump yeah. the shark. You know, like there's there's things I think the problem with those movies are not really the 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 like the big things. You could definitely write a UFO thing that would be really cool. Yep, yep. hundred percent. It's just gotta like you know. It's gotta be believable within the world. That's yeah. what you. You can put anything in a movie. It just has to work within the world you've established. When you all of a sudden, at the last ten minutes, you throw them a right, uh, a right hook, a, a curveball, and you you're like, "What?" And you can't nuke the fridge, man. Don't, you just can't. Don't, never just nuke don't the nuke the fridge. The fridge. It's, it's, <laughs> it can't it's happen. The new jump, the shark. <laughs> um, just... So we're moving on to EXO now. Ooh, cool. Uh, which is similar. It's underground. You're, you are flying, there's no walking, but it's a ship this time. Um, uh, also made by Muddy Vision as well. This is the final digital release of this game. Um, last time we completed World 1, so we won't play World 1. Cool. We'll be starting with World 2. Uh, we made it to the boss in World 5, but we're only going to be playing a little bit of World 4 and 5 because they're the new worlds okay, in, this, cool. in this version. Because um, we don't want to give away too much. We'll play, we'll play it in an After Dark later. Um, so this, uh, uh, Lewis says, this is the final retail ROM, which I'm happy to announce will be available for pre-order on Saturday, the 1st of July, tomorrow. Hey. This is going to be out tomorrow for everybody to buy the full version, the binary of this. ROMs will be then provided on July 4th, so it doesn't ruin your weekend by... <laughs> staying indoors and playing through EXO. Or make your weekend. That's depending right. Depending so, on how you look at it. You so know? you can play it on the last day of the weekend, on the 4th, but you'll be busy then too. Uh, it'd be great if you could let folks know that. There you go. You know now. The game has been completed for a while, but await, awaiting release on cart. Now, that now looks like it may happen around PRGE time. Awesome. I will be there at Portland Retro Gaming Expo, so hopefully uh, EXO will make it as well. Okay, let's power it up. EXO. This is a masterpiece of a game. It's gorgeous. Ready. Special test copy for Zero Page Homebird. This one is altered, just a disclaimer, so we don't have to play through worlds one through three to get to four and five completely, so we can show off some stuff. Um, so it, and it also gives us tons of lives. Oh, so, dude! Special test copy. Special test copy. That's like on a script when homebrew. someone's like script given yes. to. It's like <laughs> yeah. a watermark on every page. <laughs> I mean, it's very smart to do that. 
because if you're giving it out to a bunch of people and all of a sudden it's on the internet you'd be like i know who this came from I'm yeah i know i know yeah um and hopefully he's if he's given it out to a bunch of people sprinkle it throughout the game too like change change one graphic here and there that you won't really notice but if you look for it you'll notice that's, right. that's how they watermark um movies as well given out to um like, like screeners the, screeners for the academy awards if one leaks out they know exactly who did it yeah because they've got like little flashes of things throughout the film and it's like completely traceable to each person it's a lot of work to do that but okay let's press the button Pokey detected and used. Ooh. Save key detected and used. Okay, cool. A muddy vision. Dude, muddy. What up? Oh, I love little Facebook, um, Instagram, YouTube. Yeah. Um, things. Ooh, are we in space? Uh, in space in a cave, I guess. There are no options. There is only start. So I'll help you with this. Oh, actually, there's there is an information. Launch. So you get this wow, title screen. Dude. This is very reminiscent of early PC games. Um, this is a classic like design of this. I love the art of this. It's sort yeah. of like so. This is building like a, some perspective. You can see the sort of like yeah, diagonal lines. And, yeah, it's a 3D look. Um, so there's a bunch of things you can do on this screen. If you look closely, there's a, um, a 7800 there, plus what looks to be a Euro gamepad on there. Not a North American um, one. Uh, watermark wet works well, even for 2600 ROMs. Ooh, excellent. Um, so let's just explore this again. If you go over to the light switch behind, beside the door. Oh, okay. You can click on, that's clickable. Oh, this is classic. Yeah. Oh, down there. So you can turn off the lights if you need to uh, turn off the lights. You can go to that, don't launch it. Um, you can watch cinematics of intros and endings. We aren't able to watch the endings, but uh, we won't watch the intros because we'll actually see them. Um, go Artemis over, base. Go over to, oh, load, load and, and save. save. Let's go to that right now. So you have three slots to save your game. We don't have any. Mm, mm, yeah, try that thing. So this is the pokey player that plays Ooh. all the music in the game. How do you play the cards today? You know, the music and the different levels. Dude, this is the adventure theme. Yep. What do we got here? Oh, dude, danger! Do, 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 do. It's like boss time. This shit is popping off. This is like a little mood score, you yeah. know what I mean? You're just like... It's like kind of bubbly and <laughs> echoey. Oh yeah, I feel like this is like, we're in the zone. Yeah. Yeah, we're just vibing with this one. Yeah. This is victory. This is, yeah, this that's is... definitely victory. This is a little mood score, man. This is like yeah. a little. Uh... Oh, this is like we're in the belly. We're getting the... deeper and deeper. We're... It's where we're we're, we're, mer... we're. Oh yeah, this Ramping is up. fight music. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Like random encounters happen. You're fighting them. <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh, I missed. That's like right out of Ultima. Very um. Uh, a... Royalty, like you're entering the castle of somebody. That's right. Done. Oh, this is like getting to the end. Getting, getting close to the, the boss fight. This is like a you you you're almost going on the next mission. Yeah. It's like oh, you're waiting for things to start. That's right. Victory. Very much victory music. <laughs> Another fight music, right? Yeah. Like we're in the, this is feels like Intense. JRPR, uh, uh, JRPG adjacent, like yeah. Final Fantasy vibes. Oh, now, now we're back to now we're in the town. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go to the light switch again and press it a bunch of times. Like that? Keep going. What else? Oh, <gasps> what happened? Ooh, what is that? Is a secret facility located deep within the Kuiper Belt. Kuiper? Kuiper. 
uh, officially noted as an uninteresting trans Neptunian tr object artifact. I'll decide whether it's interesting. <laughs> That's okay. right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell us it's uninteresting. It looks very interesting. Artemis is a, a hollowed Type S asteroid. Artemis was built as part of the Pantheon project, which started in 20, uh, 2203. I don't even know how you'd say that. Did the fucking Greek 2203 project. <laughs> Deployment capability for eight EXO teams, plus support crew and a wing of Mamak or Wasps. Or PC. <laughs> or PC. <laughs> One of you. There you oh, go. Okay. I uh, try the lockers. Oh, the credits. There we go. Cool, cool code. code. Lewis, Lewis Hill. Hill. Perfect it's an A2. pixels. Lewis Hill. Oh, oh, Lewis. Oh, whoa, way too fast. Did you... I didn't do anything. Oh, okay. it's just, it's Devious cool. design. Lewis Hill. Code Gurus. Special thanks. Dude, yo, yo, I made it. The Hill Tribe. Oh, what you so Mike Sarna, Matt Smith, terrific, terrific testers. testers. Robert Tut 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 Tutito. Stephen oh. Ramirez. Perfect pistols. Lewis Hill. Marvelous music. Bobby Clark. Dude, Bobby Clark slayed it, man. This oh, is yes. honestly is really Destroying sick. Destroying it every time. Wow, this is kind of like an old school kind of game, man. I didn't expect this to be the game. It's um, full of great stuff. Yeah, I used to play like some old old kind of Game Boy games, which were like this style where you would sort of like a lot oh, of them yeah. were puzzles. Maniac it, Mansion, Mist, really, and always hard. Okay, go to how to play. Left and right, using the patter stick. Hey, okay, we've got that kind of joystick. Ours is red though. Okay, press button. Oh, okay, left and right. You have to do it. See if it's actually gonna do it. I think it's just actually. It almost feels like it's just playing the thing. Oh, it's okay. Like, up will increase upward momentum. If you like a challenge, you'll love this one. It it is it is challenging. It's hard. Let's say. Yeah. By button one fires the blasters. Used for soft targets. This is all very good information for you. Like mines and probes. Gotta look out for the probes. <laughs> button two fires rockets to use on hard targets. Oh, and those sort of fall. Like missiles and mission objectives. Yeah, the, the big ones. Up or down? Okay, cool. So depending on the direction. Yeah, because you can make it go curve up or curve down. Destroy generator. Collect security passes. I need that. Very I need important. That. I need those passes, too. Yeah, to exit. Find the exit and escape. Destroy generator, collect tickets, get out. <laughs> One more thing. Just Have one fun. more thing. Each world has a supply of crates for lives and rockets. Each world has a secret area with a keystone. Those are sometimes hard to find. So we may not find A little them. Easter egg. That's nice. Yeah. And good luck. Oh, there were switches. Sorry. That's not cool. That's okay. Good luck. There you go. Very Should we launch? We should launch. Let's launch. Let's oh, go up to the light. I don't know if there's any more. Up, up, up. Try that. No. Try that little pipe, black pipe thing. Oh, like down here? Yeah. No, I think that I think I think that's it. I'm curious about this like key, this pad. You look at this. I found another one. Look at this. Shit. Oh, oh, this guy. Yeah. Okay, we got our thing. Yeah, that's our thing. Got ourselves a, a discman. Load and save. Up and down to change colors. Ooh. Oh, go to the light again? Or maybe it was on a different part. Up and down? Hold the button and go up and down? No? Maybe that was something else. Cool. Oh, on the CD player. Okay, so go back to the CD player. We didn't find everything out. Up and down? Oh, there Yo! we go. Okay, nice that's backlight. cool. Some nice segmented I'm quite, LEDs. I'm taken by the magenta myself. It's a nice magenta, isn't it? It's, it's very nice... soothing. Also, Ooh, I like the blue. Blue's cool. Yeah. Red is like, oh, it's a risky time. Green is very classic. classic. Black and white is like, you know. Yeah, magenta's nice. I like soothing. the magenta. That one's really good. It's kind of got a steampunk vibe to it, you know. Yeah. It's like our little, a little xenon uh, magenta light illuminating the scene. Okay. Let's launch. So this is level one. We won't do level one because I've done that completely. Okay. So we're gonna. Well, let's just read about it. Hamish is being held on. Kanika in the prison complex beneath the desert. Let's go get him. Ooh, okay. Okay, next one. Uh, Rix is on the factory world of Eris 5. Beware. Environmental risk. Beware the lava. Oh, man, these guys. It's so much work. House? Mm -hmm. House? No, mouse. Mouse, 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 mouse is on the forest moon of Kish in the ancient temple ruin. This is a high risk area. Ooh, yeah. I'm always down for some ancient temples. I'm not going to lie. That's right. 
In this level four, the Colonel is being held on a planet called Tembian. Recover all team members to unlock. So it's unlocked for us in this version. Known only as the facility. Ooh. Location unknown. Oh, shit. Dude, oh, the no, facility. we did. We, oh, on the no, second level. Go to the second level. First. Well, this one right here, lava. Okay, we, we did this one, but we made it to the boss and died. So let's go into world three then. Maybe this there guy already. Ah, oh, dude, I'm on down forest moon. Perfect. You're the one who wanted to do Ancient the temple. temples. Yep. I'm down. Maybe we'll find some Ewoks. Let's go. Maybe. <laughs> Some non Ewoki walks. Got your launch. Some A walks. <laughs> A walks. Uh, Kish, Necropolis. Some nice little animations there. The temple entrance is deep within the forest. Piles of huge bones litter the floor. Oh, mouse is in there. We've gotta gotta get find mouse, mouse from the temple. Mouse. Great uh, clouds going in front of the moon. Yeah, that does look like. Endor. Yo. It? it does. That's the thing. I yeah. had this sort of end. Oh my god, it's Indy again! It is, man. Whoa! No! Oh, no! I, I think you have to, like, pause somewhere. Ooh. Try the top right corner there. Oh no. No, Damn I it. think I just gotta, like. And you gotta power through it and, like, go above that chainsaw thing. I think that's the plan, and just, like, Looks like he's given us a uh, whole ton of lives. Up. Oh, there you go. Alright. Oh, that was called Indiana. It's called Invicta. No, what's that? Oh, my God. Yeah, each of those fires off, so you want to get past them. You can kill that with your... Um, but you don't need to. Oh, my God, that was close. Is there, like, a, um, a time limit for this game? No, okay. no. So this is a take-it-slow game. Okay, good, okay. Don't, I'm, don't I'm sort of still in the mindset of, like... So you can't... Yeah. You don't... Oh, you can't get that one back. Sorry. Mistakes were made. You have to use that, but you don't have to. There you go. How many of those do I have? Do I have a limited number? Uh, 11 left. You do get refills, and those do come back every time you go in the room. So if you can avoid them by just not encountering them, like just bypassing, that's better. Oh, le le music's too loud, probably. Yeah. You gotta just go for it. Ooh, okay, I just I went for Yo! Okay, so that's that TV there. That's a checkpoint. See those things? Those yeah. disable something in the room, but they come back. Is these so, things? Oh, don't no no. Sorry, that little light at the bottom there. So you got rid of the um, the uh, laser that's going across. So you might want to shoot those two things because you'll have to hide oh, there. Oh shit! Wanted to shoot those two things. Not with that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now you want to time it. You have to open it. No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. It'll be closed. You have to go back and open it with that switch. Oh, I see. And then just... You might have enough. No. It's a very short time, so you'll have to time it with the bullet. There you go. Down, down, down. Perfect. Okay, got it. Good. I'm gonna go underwater. This seems dicey. Uh, your, your ship's good with water. Okay, good. Whoa, but it's actually hard. It's the can opposite I, of already in that sense. Can I go to the time. other side? Let's see. Yo, I can. That's cool. Oh, yeah. So there's not nothing up there that I can see that you need to go get. So I wouldn't want to go up there. Okay, I'm gonna just ignore it. Yeah. I just gotta find mouse, it's man. Like, uh, that's what I'm here for. Is my, you do my go guy slower in the water, mouse. right? Yeah, much slower. Uh, that's something to take into consideration. This is gonna suck. Look at this. You can do it. You can do it. Oh, oh, you could have hit on the other side, but I wonder how that's. So you go back to the last checkpoint. Slog through the water. Okay. Yeah, EXO is an excellent space opera. Okay. It's full feature list. Five oh, full, shit. full worlds uh, for the player to explore and defeat, each with a unique graphical theme and environment from industrial factories to ruined ancient temples. Oh. You use up all the lives. <laughs> so far, I've managed to make it past uh, two rooms. I'm kind of an expert in this game. <laughs> Might be the might be the might be the best player of this game ever. Yeah. Um, five end of level bosses to defeat. Four hidden keystones to unlock. I already got three of those. Now, already. what I would <laughs> do with this 
is just get over and stay on their left hand side without triggering it. Yeah, that makes sense. Let's see. Okay, and then move to the right and then back to the left immediately to trigger it. And then, oh, yeah, 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 even better. I didn't think all the way back, but that worked. Yeah, well, I I, I kind of tried to do that last you time, and I, and, I found my, and I found myself just like... Oh. There you go. Yeah. It, that one was just no room. Yeah, it's not... It's not in the cards for us. Oh, this is a hard game, dude. It's very challenging. Thankfully, uh, Lewis has supplied us with a infinite lives uh, hack of this. Yay! Okay, so we'll be able to, like... Okay, so, I kind of, like, I'm not... That first one seems safe, but also, like, what is safe? I think it is safe. I think you just got Okay, I'm, I'm to... seeing, so the skull ones seem to never go, but the other ones yeah. go, so... Yeah, so you can touch them, you just can't be squished by them. So you can press against them. That'll give you the most time. So you can see there's a switch behind that lightning bolt. That laser. So you're going to have to turn off that laser with something else and then come back. I'm just going to assume that lava is no good. N yeah. It's not your friend in this game. Or most games. Um, 15 Pokey Tunes for your audio enjoyment. Hey! And it was our audio enjoyment. We enjoyed it. Uh, more than 100 screens in total. You definitely took the right path, I think. These are always hard, where you're like, am I actually... This is going to be really... Ooh, I don't know if you did take the right path. Because that thing is going to kill you immediately. I think you have to go around. Because if you go, that thing's going to fire and kill you right away. You're going to have to go around the harder way. Now, now it's much harder. Uh, I think you can get it without triggering. Just stay on the ceiling. There you go. I think so too. Yeah, there's more room. Uh, high score uh, cart, including 7800 GD high score cart support, Atari Vox, and save key support for saving progress and unlocks. Three save slots. I'm going to go down. We'll see yeah. what happens. Uh, there's a save point. That's good. I definitely uh, fly to that save point. It looks dangerous. But... I just like, I don't, I'm like, I don't trust anything. <laughs> I don't think you should. Yo, safe point. Yay. Okay. Uh, Tari Vox speech supported for boss fights. Looking forward mm. to that. Uh, cinematic viewer so you can revisit past glories. Oh, I want to revisit that glory. Uh, comprehensive how to play tutorial. Ooh, this good. is becoming like labyrinthian. Ooh, there's the exit, but you haven't done anything yet. I gotta find mouse. Like... Yeah, you haven't it rescued. Um, you also haven't got a, a um, key card or destroyed the... Ooh, another checkpoint. That's a bad sign. When there's two checkpoints right in a row. Oh. Still, you have to find some things to turn off. Ooh. Cool. So I'm going to... There's yeah, lots... More exploring there's a here. lot to do that explore. checkpoint. Yeah, yeah. Because you're going to be going that way or up. That's a good point, yeah. i got to disable some of these lasers. Let's figure that out. Sometimes there's a screen that doesn't try to kill you. <laughs> okay. I don't trust that. Um, I, yeah, okay, you're safe there. I would fly all the way to the right. Oh, no, not there. Don't go up immediately. They're too close to you. Looks like you can make it over that those guys without triggering. But I'm going to trigger the ones on the top. Ooh, I would... Yeah, but that's fine. Just fly all the way to the left and go all the way up. There you go. Very good. Then just trigger. Perfect. Go up. So there's your first switch. Yay! So that'll disable probably that one way back. Yeah, let's go back and check out that laser. Uh, unlockable Easter eggs such as the Pokey Music Player. I want that Pokey Music Player. <laughs> Fully PAL compatible and adjusted. So uh, for yeah. European fans of Muddy Visions games, let's and other go PAL up. places. Let's see what's going on up here. More stuff. Okay. Yeah, I would go back. Uh, 32k of music and sound effects. Yo. That is a lot. Over 80k of graphics. Now this is a 512k, 512k game, which is very big for a 7800 game. I just fly right through. There you go. Uh, no. Uh, what was there? 
think there's something way back a little bit further. Oh, that one's not gone yet. That one's not. It. Maybe it was the one down there. Mmm, it could have been, yeah. It's okay. I'm gonna go maybe up. Yeah. Do some more exploring. Just to check it out. And then see the lay of the land. Uh, let's see. The main update here since the game was complete is the game will support the 7800 GD's HSC emulation as well as the regular HSC safe key and Atari box. There's a bunch of Easter eggs. Don't forget the light switch. Uh, don't forget to plug in your Atari box for bite a boss fight speech. So we have the Atari box in. And uh, I have something to show you after uh, we play the game as well. Cool. That is going to be a very cool bonus thing that right. comes with the game. Um, in terms of EXO going into the, the Atari Age store, uh, Lewis said in his statements, uh, my other titles are all original IPs, not ports, in the way that causes an issue. Danger Zone, Bernie Games, EXO, Tire Tracks, Daredevil, these will not be impacted. So this is fine to come out. Uh, expected PRGE 2023. No! Which is October. Ooh, what? You can go underwater. You have to do some timing there. Some brutal timing. You can destroy that at the top and get a refill of... I think uh, I'm fucked. I think I'm fucked. Oh, Ooh, no, I'm gone. I'm just gone. enough. Okay, is that so something? Get, yeah, that's missiles. So you got refilled on the missiles, which is good. And you have to destroy that. Nice. Hey, so that's Ooh, like... Ooh! Oh, now it'll flash on and off. I'm gonna go through there. I go through there. Ooh, careful. That seems close. Oh, I no! Knew it was oh, I got magically transported. Did, did, so the <laughs> thing is still destroyed, technically? Yes. Yeah, it's all good. Okay. So we've done that one. Don't park on the lightning. Money Funster gave you a tip. Don't park on the lightning. You can't tell me what to do. I'll <laughs> You're park not my real mom. I'm going to park on the lightning whenever I want. <laughs> Yeah, it's really good advice. <laughs> really, really good advice. Avoid lightning for high score. Oh, did you see this? Oh, now you can get through it. Let's explore this. Nice. Oh, I haven't been reading out the names of the levels. This one is called Edge of Despair. I feel the despair. Oh, you have an opportunity. I'm just kind of f trying to feel this timing out yeah. real quick. Me, I tend to go on the rush side of things, which gets me in trouble a lot. <laughs> oh. I'm on the uh, fly directly into <laughs> danger side of things. Oh, okay. Cool, cool. It's a tactic, you know. I think it's got to be... I'm trying to figure out Here this timing. Now it's going to be this time. There you go. There you go. Now, you're, now you're good. Crossbow level. Oh, I missed the crossbow level. Ooh. Ooh. And double. I would just poke your head in and go immediately out. Oh, or that. I would trigger that one from the bottom. Don't waste your um, oh, good point. Yeah. Look at this like looming, like dead hanging fucking <laughs> it's, fetus it's of great. an animal. Like, oh my god. It's not super great. Ooh. Careful, there's one there. I would go up to the top and trigger it and then immediately go back. No, you can't shoot it. Whoa, okay, this is tough. Tough stuff, guys. Yeah. There's some more lives. Very nice. I think Mouse is going to get rescued. I think so. I think you're going to make it. There's a chip. Okay, there we go. got a chip. That's what you need to, to, to finish the game get to the exit you need that I want to switch too now that switch probably helps that area way in the beginning oh no it went through the wall oh. Oh, I didn't notice that I didn't think it was gonna go through the wall either I just yeah go. The... muddy but muddy uh, says it does it, does. Go, it goes through the wall by the way <laughs> lots to learn still. yeah Let's to learn. Oh. oh no, no, I'm done. Squish. Well, at least you didn't get too far from the checkpoint. Oh, good opportunity right here. Oh, I could get a bucket. Could have snuck in. Yeah. 
Both are very risky. Both have a very small margin. Oh no. That's no way. No, there's no room. You have to bomb it. Yeah. If bomb one and then trigger the other one. Mm. Uh, Muddy says there's usually a couple different ways to navigate each room. That makes sense. Which is great. There's, it's like more than one. Because then everybody has their own way of doing uh, the levels, which is which is really awesome. Really nice. Yeah. Like the almost like like sad face, like weird face. Stuff. <laughs> yeah. So cool. Pursing his lips. Uh, the lure of that card. It's just out of reach. Gotta get patient. Yeah. No rushing. Be patient. There you go. Patience pays off. Now both those things in the bottom are green. That means you're good to go for the level, but I would get in there and... Nice. Now are you going to backtrack? Oh, Back I will. Back to the beginning. Because there was something there. Something hidden. Something. It could be the gems. Or what are they called in this game? Um, keystones. I'm unlocking the keystones. Gonna go underwater. Let's get this going. Okay. Thrust asks if the same engine as Artie. That would make sense because it 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 feels like the same engine. Artie is a newer version. Oh, okay. Yeah, because this one was first, right? This one, uh, let's see. This one was first posted publicly, uh, May 2020, and Artie was first publicly posted May 2022. Yeah. Artie is, is two years newer. Okay. This is the exit, right? That's the exit, yeah. Great music. Really, really nice music. I'm gonna get this going. Um, now it was back, right? It was. It back. was up one, then I think left, 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 left. left. Okay, let's let's do some exploring, guys. Let's see what's going on. Well, the thing you can trigger that and then go through the top, which is a faster way. Oh my God! Oh. What are you doing? <laughs> Did you miss that? I just no. I just oh, got. Just I just. Go for I it. just got scared. Oh, okay. I was gonna go and then I got scared. Well, it's hard because like. The, actually, what happened was I was trying to trigger it to go up, but it almost better to just go because the problem is, is like once you once you're going, you're kind of going. Yeah, and there's not much to the left of this that's super dangerous. You just stay near the ceiling. That's true. Oh, there it is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Got blinded to the dangers. Well, no, I just like it's... oh, crag of crossbow. There we go. Ossuary Primus, Ancient Peril. What, I mean, but, but what does this open up? I don't, yeah, that's true. Hmm. Is there something even farther back? It's possible. Ooh. Let's check it out. I don't remember. You're going to have to use your uh, missiles on both of those. Shooting. Gotta get that timing. Now, I could be wrong. You did miss an early switch. Oh, really? Oh, I think it's right there. That's why you have to go up there. It's underneath. Tricky. Be careful. There you go. Right, I'm just gonna check out the timing real quick. Yeah. Perfect. We're right after he shoots here. And hide. Tricky. There it is. Oh, there you go. I still don't know where it is, but at least it's open now. At least something's going on. Something happened. Oh. Should I go all the way back? I would, just because you're already here. 
Yeah, just to sort of explore. I doubt it is. Look at the bottom, I just realized the red is doom awaits. Oh, the last pulpit. Uh... I don't think there's anything back here. I think we're the good. timing on the guns has a random factor too. Really? A very subtle one. It must be really subtle. But it's safe to go usually right after. I would trigger that. Um, Cause I don't know if I really want to die and go like back here. Like if I die, I'll go back to the. That's true. <laughs> That's a smart. Uh... Although I have made it pretty far. Eh. No. You're very cold. Okay. I would just die. Muddy says you're very cold. Very so it cold. must be further along in the game again. That makes again. sense. So you're going back to the beginning. Back to the very beginning. I'll kill myself in a sec. <laughs> just... I never thought I would have that sentence. Yeah. So here's the... Oh, it doesn't even let you go back. Okay. It's like, nope, it's blocked. See, that was... There it is. <sighs> Whoa, is that new? Yeah. That has that to be new. That before. has to be new. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, Whoa. it's all new. Where does this go? I don't see anything here. We're going to find out. Yeah, maybe you have to shoot something. Ooh, that was close. What, 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 what? Oh, is it up there? The top left? No. No, that feels wrong. Oh, you already collected it. It would be over there. Is it in here? What is this room? Nothing here. Never been here before. Cool. Oh, this is an unlocked copy. Oh, okay. It would be here. We already have it. <laughs> what is it? It's, uh, it's the... What is it called? Hi, cat. Um... Damn it. Keystone. It's the diamond on the, the HUD at the bottom. Oh, that makes so sense. So we... We didn't unlock it. No, you can't go up there. Shit. So we're good. We're you can good. finish. You can finish okay. the level. Okay. okay. So, I guess you already have the keystone with the unlocked version, which is which is fine. Which is fine. Uh, but you did do all the things that we needed to do to get the keystone. Okay, which that's is the really important that's part. really good news. Yeah. There you go. Incoming transmission from the Guardian. I'm the Guardian of this place. You should not be here. You, you shall not, not pass. pass. That is all. Transmission ends. Excellent. Wow. What's this? Oh, it's a boss. Run. Up, 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 up. Sorry, I forgot about this. Shoot the boss. Avoid the bullets. Shoot the boss and avoid the bullets. Yeah, try and use your... Ooh, if you can, but don't waste them. Ten left. Oh, shit. Oh, he's green. Oh, Yo! Hide. No. Oh, okay, I'm not very good. Certainly not my, my, my... I would just shoot him. Oh, there you got him. Okay. Oh, you, you're not making a dent in him. I think when he turns color. That's... That'll shoot him. Shoot him now. Shoot him now. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Okay. Shoot. Oh, oh, okay. Either that's when you can shoot him, or that's the warning that... Get the hell out of the way, because the big things are coming. Uh, I'm doing really bad. <laughs> you suck at this. No! Shoot him, shoot him. Oh, oh yep. Oh. <gasps> there he said it. You shall not pass. Okay. So it is when he's green, you can shoot him. So don't bother, just avoid right now. Just lead his bullets. shoots directly for you. Then use your missiles. No. Oh, you get him, get him, get him, get him. 
No. no. How do you avoid that? Oh, when there's you just nothing. die. Well, yeah, the people generally do better than me at this. <laughs> just overall, because like there's lots, there's lots to improve. You ran out of wall. Yeah, that's a huge factor. It's like um, Space Invaders when you like you've blown apart your own bunkers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're like no well, protection. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Mouse, you don't have your best. The only reason why we're winning is, well, we have the cheat codes Infinite enabled. Infinite lives. That's right. You gotta get mouse, man. Gotta mouse. Rescue. There you go. Oh, two more. Oh. Yeah. How do you avoid that? It is a wall. There's there's one spot I think you can survive. You need to shoot him all the time to have a chance. So when he turns green, you have to just hammer him. So after the... There you go. There you go. Almost. What? Next time you'll get him. Yeah. With my, the right with my infinite lives. <laughs> yes. You have a chance. There's always a chance. All I need is a chance. Never tell me the odds. Uh, never tell me the odds. <laughs> Yay. Oh, I guess I can shoot him while he's... I think he just changed, maybe. Cool. Mouse rescued! Keystone hey, recovered! Mouse. mouse. Devs, this place! Do us? Do us. Do us. I've not had this much fun since that time on Zypher 6. Cool. Don't remind me. Oh, shit. Zoe, I heard a lot of talk about the facility and Tembian. Tembian is a place out near the Oleum Rift, I think. We've got some deep lore going on here yeah. in this game. That's deep Sarit space? Oh, yeah. yeah. We need the whole team before we try that. Oh, dude, you don't want to fucking go into deep okay. Sarit space. Let's roll. That's not what you want to do. Press fire. Okay, now that we've shown all three levels on the show, we'll, we'll, we'll show first and second now. Yeah. Just briefly, because we have played both of those on the show. Um, so this is the first level. Show a little bit of the architecture of this very um also like yeah a little bit a little bit easier you learning some of the mechanics yeah the they present it a little uh, he presents it a little bit easier fashion but still not hard no, not well, yeah it's still easy. like even this is like it's like you have to shoot this out and then go and you gotta just go straight yeah Look. got your your waypoint whoa oh my God. that, that sucks terrible. i apologize Oh yeah, so we were sort of chatting about like at least in the world of like film. I yes. mean, as a writer, you're there's always this question of like writing a spec script based off of like an IP of someone else's writing versus like your own original pieces. And there's such value to all of it, right? Yeah. Yes. Where like um there's different skill sets. Yeah, and for like each one. And the challenge of of binding yourself to an IP is that like you don't you'll never actually own that story yeah but you'll have a built-in audience and you'll demonstrate your ability to craft something within that area but what's also funny is there's a lot of famous spec scripts for other things where people read them and they're like you know you could just change these names and <laughs> shuffle things around because the interesting thing is yes. once you get in there it's like how much is yours and how much is somebody yeah. else's and like you know you don't have to like um you know you can you can start with inspiration from something else yep. But it's very much like part of a writer's catalog if you want to get hired to, to do something is to write a, in in the genre to demonstrate that you can like write something that's not yours that's like yes. that's working within like another sort of world but um there is an inherent sadness where you put in all this work and then that's like well no but this will never be mine but it's the kind of thing that can get you a job it's the kind of thing yep. that can like and honestly get your attention um prove your skills yeah, all those things. Um, but, yeah. The, and, 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 and and something in the vein of another world that's already established um, can um, propel you forward, get you attention, like a lot of attention. It's a built-in audience, yeah. always. Which, and, is, which is why movies love book adaptations. And, you know, there's just a million of them every year, right? Yeah. Of just, like, taking in different kind of, like... 
you know, like different, basically different kind of like things that have a built in audience, but it's hard, like unless you're being paid to do something like that. It's always like, it's this question of like time investment of like, do you want to spend all this time writing a film that in the end maybe won't be yours? But the irony is, is that these spec scripts are the main thing that will get you hired because people don't, people aren't really interested, at least in the world of like writing, like your organic real stories they want to like they want to hire you to write an episode of something like that's you, right. you know what i mean that's what they're hiring you for they're like can you oh, write geez. um and and you're also like um and you and you want to be you know, demonstrate your ability to to take someone else's ideas and, and make them yours and yes make them, and make them sing you know and then based off that uh you can propose your original ideas now that you're like oh i'm a proven but it's a hard question, right? It's there's never anything clear about it, and especially in these sort of gray zones as well, you know. It's been tough with all the all the stuff that's been going on. Right? Like, yeah, and, a, and it's 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 similar, right? It's it has some crossover. Oh my God. Okay, so these are the first <laughs> two worlds. I'm not gonna play them. I'm just playing it fast and loose. Very cool design with the this lava world. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, a Smitty 870, uh, oh, sorry, 8, 8, 7800, 7800 that said really like, you know, this great, well, one point he was even saying earlier that, on the other hand, a lot of bad adaptations have been because whoever was in control wanted to do their own thing instead, <laughs> yes. resulting in something nobody was fully happy with. Yeah, wrecking, wrecking the game, wrecking the movie, right? Uh, when there's uh, a fan base that has an expectation well, and it is like if you're hiring an artist to do something, um, y- th- there's people who are a fan of that artist, and there's people who are a fan of, say, like, the IP. Yes, that's and right. And if the artist is bound by the IP, um, so they can't really express their own voice, and they're doing their own thing, so that, like, the people who like the IP don't like it, well, then, yeah, it's like nobody's. <laughs> nobody's happy. Um, but I, I had a, I had a r- advice from like a like a guest speaker at one point in film school who said, just do something you love. It's like if you're gonna write a genre movie, don't write a genre that you don't like. Right? Oh, if you yeah. want to write a horror movie, don't be like, oh, I don't like horror movies, but I'm gonna write the good horror. It's like no, do, no. love the thing that you're doing. Like yeah. that's what we want to see. And it's the same with like IPs. If you're gonna like be hired to write any sort of like thing, write the be a fan and, and like serve it. Give it the make it the best thing that it can be. You know, I want. I just watched like um, Enter the Spider Verse recently, and that's clearly written by people who love <laughs> Spider Man. They right. fucking love it. Oh. It's like this is like there's so much nonstop Easter eggs. It's embracing and understanding the history of all this stuff if you're like i'm gonna deconstruct spider-man and mock him it's like well no but like (laughs) no we haven't (laughs) yeah maybe not okay so this is world number four we're just gonna take a quick look at it cool sounds good as as i showed me terribly playing the other levels just to show off them um so we'll go through a couple screens just to get a a feel for the look of it and the um enemies in it and then uh we'll play it on After Dark, um, after it's released to everyone else. Um, so after July 4th, because I'll yeah. be busy this weekend too. Um, okay, Artemis Base launching. Do the Artemis Base. A blister like crater pierces the bleak planetary surface, pus flows in thick rivers. So this is a um, body horror. Uh, themed level. There was a lot of those in the 90s, uh, especially with shooters. Uh, can the Colonel be like... alive in there? Like, um, organic. Very organic. Oh, yeah. This falls right in line with those. Oh, that's very tight timing. Ah, this is the, it's the music. Perfect, creepy it's music. Perfect shit, man. Oh, so you know what I've been playing? I've uh, been doing a run through. I've been playing um, Fallout New Vegas. Oh, it's um, a great and, game! Oh, oh my god! I played all of the Fallout games at this point, and yep. this was when I never, like, I never finished like even the it. Early ones? Yeah, I played uh, oh. one, two, three, New Vegas, as well as four. Nice. Um, but I haven't done seventy six because it's it's, it's it's an yeah, MMO. It's, 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 it's a different game. It's kind of it's not really like it's a whole different thing. I just I, I'm not interested. I'm also either. trying the, at this moment in my life and uh, to to avoid kind of grindy games, which are really more about the gameplay and sort of like leveling up. And I love mechanics and I love 
systems and things. Yeah. But I but lately I've been really wanting to lean into like games that have really good writing, um, and really good story and, and, yeah, and those sorts of things. MMOs that's hard to do because it's so open. Well, it is, it's kind of they're about the slot wheel in a way. Like, you kill a monster, nice. you maybe get a legendary item, you upgrade your thing, you level up your character. Like, it's, it's that's like, I love RPGs for that. Like, it's my favorite oh my genre, God. but it does have that sort of element to it. But I've been just blown away by New Vegas revisiting it. Oh, it's Like, so it's good. just unbelievably good, man. And um, uh, the thing that I've also noticed, being like a big fan of the Fallout franchise, is that um, in Fallout 4, they have this convention where they'll cut to your character talking in third person in dialogue scenes. Okay. Yep. And, the and, and they'll almost reiterate or they'll say like a version of what you've said. But there's something so much more immersive about the first person where you never break that first person point of view. People are always talking to you, and you and your character never says the lines of dialogue. You like right. you read it, you point the thing, you go like, "I say this," and then the person responds to what you said. You know? Yeah, and and that's that's a very common thing to not break the illusion that it's you playing it. They never supply a voice to the character. Yeah, and uh. I didn't realize how much I missed that until I started play. Because the last one I played was a ton of four. That was, was the burning room. Oh no, I missed it. Maria's pickle. Um, and then I, the other thing I'm just so blown Don't away is the, with New Vegas is the radical player agency. The mm -hmm. really, truly, like it's one of the few RPGs I've seen where they're like, you get to decide. There are all these factions. There are all yes. these options. Yeah. What are you gonna do? It's a lot of choice. And, and I, that that started with Ultima, um, way back in the '80s, where they. Um, where there is a, a system of, well, you could be a bad guy. Yeah. Or you could be a good guy, and it and your story will change depending on that. And and you get to decide sort of the and it's and it's a big enough world that it's like there's a lot to explore, ah. but it's also not too big that it's sort of like you flounder. Yeah. Um because I think a lot of open world games are actually a bit too big for my appetite lately. They're getting you. And I don't think bigger is better, actually. I think that, like... Not necessarily, because ha they stretch out the the story and, and the gameplay so thin sometimes. It's a lot of walking. and So there there's a good look at level four. We don't want to spoil it too much for those who uh, have only played the demo. And obviously, nobody has the full game yet. Yeah. But you will uh, be able to pre-order it tomorrow and uh, be able to play it on the 4th. We're going to take a quick look at level 5. Known only as the okay. facility. Dude, we're going to check out this facility. Unknown. It's unknown. It's a mystery. And, um, and the last point I wanted to bring up about yeah. it is um, I love, love, love that in the Fallout games, there's this charisma speech check that you have the opportunity in conflict to decide, do I kill this person right. or do I, and then in my role playing, do I resolve this peacefully? Do I yeah. like negotiate? Cause I think there is this rhythm that can happen in RPGs where you go into a dungeon, you kill everybody, you leave, you go into a dungeon, <laughs> you kill everyone, everyone you leave. Yeah. Oh, and, it's, and it's fascinating because it unlocks a whole other lane of content and story and character. And it also like, if the developers are investing Investing in dialogue passes, and I think that's very much like I don't know many franchises that's done it better than Fallout in that regard, and it's something that is like I'm just so I'm so taken by, um, and yeah, so I can't recommend the game enough if someone wants to oh revisit an old masterpiece yeah. as a sort of like I love RPGs I've played them my whole life. I've just been completely floored by it, and it's nice because it's like it kind of is a game where it has a clear ending, and it's like it's not it's not a grind fest forever. It's like it's a good like twenty hour game, and then you're done. Yeah. So this level is is very bright, very clean, very primary colors, very contrasty. I like it. Which way should we go? Up, down, or I right? I think to the right. I don't know why. Tiny like passage. Uh, yeah. What's that? More missiles? Uh, yes. So let's get those. I'll take some missiles. Yeah. I don't think you can. Uh, oh, I can't get through there yet. I don't think there's any options. Um. 
uh, one and two are masterpieces as well, though. Um, are they? Yeah. They they are they're very different. Looking. You have to learn how to play a completely different system. Right. Um, but it, it what's interesting is seeing the adaptation, but the story and the writing is incredible. They're like three quarter view. Or yeah, they're, they're isometric. isometric. Yeah, and they're and they're they're very turn. They're not turn based, but you have a, a number of action points you can use. Tile based. Um, yeah, tile based, and you can okay. use those action points to move or attack. Um, and so it's a it's almost like an old school kind of like a tabletop RPG, but like simulated. Yeah. And the depth of dialogue and options uh, is unbelievable. So that's what they went heavy on is the, yeah, the story. And, but the combat as well is incredible. Like it's just it's one of those it's one of those gems of old school gaming that like. Yeah. Bit of an NES palette. Muddy Funster says yes, yes, very contrasting. I love the. I love the holes in the walls behind it. Oh my god. Anyway, I'm not really supposed to show this off too much. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, look, the green. Very NES palette. But yeah, those, but those are the things that get me excited in the world of gaming. Yes. What is this? Oh, I see. Yeah, this, this is the absolute masterpiece. It'll, it'll challenge you. Um, it'll keep you occupied for quite a long time. We have infinite lives almost. <laughs> That's why we're able to die constantly and explore. It's a puzzle um, game. It's a labyrinth. Yeah, it's a mild labyrinth. It's it's not to the point where I am getting frustrated because I have to write it all out on well, a piece of paper. There's only so many paths. I think that I really wonder like how much um, the the like infinite lives are like sort of changing our gameplay. Like I'd be very curious to see the like a real proper run through. Like because yeah. like, there's some tactics and some sort of like core elements to the game that we're missing because we can kind of like cheese our way Experiment through it. And, like yeah. like for example, in my head, I'm like, well, I don't want to like do this checkpoint because I'll just die and I go back. Like the fact that you can <laughs> kind of almost like that's a sort of completely different factor. Um, but a very deep, interesting game with like lots of amazing options. Yeah. So you can watch the intros of the different worlds. There's the one we just went on. The flat, barren landscape is punctuated with pre-industrial sediments in the distance. A modern building points skyward. Destroy the lab and the overmind. And as you finish each of the worlds, you can um, look at those as well. So very nice as you <laughs> complete things. It'll open up. Um, absolutely stunning work by Muddy Funster, uh, by Lewis Hill, and the music by Synth Papalooza, of course, is also absolutely amazing. The and there's a sort of, sort of similar um, art direction between the two games because it's Muddy's yeah. game. It's interesting to see the like this sort of tile sets and the sort of like there's some there's a, some borrowed kind of elements and it's they're very different games, but they also have a similar kind of like the fact that you're also this kind of like in both games you're not bound by gravity. You know you're yes. able to like you're you're flying and you're moving. Freeform. You yeah. know which is a different feeling to say like because most of these kind of styles of games you'll be sort of like you'll be jumping or you'll be climbing or you're to the ground yeah. as well there's no jumping versus you have this like you have all these options so it's like it creates this sort of more of a labyrinth that in a way the game almost feels like we're like bird's eye view you know what i mean like watching yeah. somebody sort of it, because of that flexibility but i also and i like the fact that like you have a lot of tools to like escape these different elements there's a yeah. it's a maze element i do feel like if we didn't have the infinite lives it would be much like the last game where there is this real like you <laughs> danger you have yeah. to get through you have to like really learning and like the skill but not not even just skill the knowledge of the game and the level yeah. is like you have to almost like it's get paramount. used to it yeah, so many parallels between them. Each of one has two weapons. Each of them has gravity. Um, you can fly and move in each. You're yeah. sort of like, and you're entering into different areas with caution. There's different paths you can take. Uh, obviously, RD is much more linear. Bombs, lasers, you just don't have lasers, time. missiles. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Uh, Muddy Funster says, James approved maze. Yes, not so crazy of a maze where it's like, oh, especially not in the dark too. Oh. The dark. I is, mean, is... Artie has that, but mostly it's your own fault for <laughs> destroying the light. Sometimes you can't avoid it. Um, absolutely, both. Something games about the the, the settings of both of these games too that I think Muddy did a really yes. really good job of like creating these like 
environments that are just even though like the setting is not exactly like it's still the same gameplay i'm just pumped to be like i'm in egypt i'm in south america <laughs> i'm on like this like ancient temple i'm in this like facility like really beautiful job of uh, those yes. things mean a lot man like i just i i think that a setting is actually one of the most important parts of a game that like can easily be lost and forgotten in the in the all of the things that need to be played it's a real x factor yeah and there's the classic ones that you can go to like ice world fire world lava world air world yeah the tropes but creating some different ones in here is great having the grounded in uh, a reality with arty and different areas of the world and using the themes of the different cultures is absolutely great um and you know referential back to the 90s uh like i said the the, the body horror the uh uh organic look to that is is great as well throwing that back in shocking amount of content for a 7800 game yes like he said he pointed out the the size of the music and the graphics it's 32k of music 80k of graphics um absolutely stunning and, and muddy ups ups the ante with each of his games every single time it just packs it in how big was the usual 7800 game back then yeah um let me see and i love i love all your cool lore i'm so pumped about that kind of stuff like having these cool like different planets and artemis and like you know these different like and even these characters you got to rescue mouse the colonel like yeah. you know all that stuff main means something it helps me immerse in this world you know and i think that world building is like something that's a re can get really lost so there were five games made for 144k, um, a ton at 128k, a uh, few with 64, few with 48, and then a fair amount with 32k. So they went up to 144 in the classic, and this is a 512k game, as you can tell. It's it's huge and doesn't have a lot of repetitive things. There's so many different worlds. There's like almost full screen motion graphics going on and stories and it's absolutely beautiful it, it's also interesting how um uh, it does set the standard for 7800 homebrew games yeah i mean there's so many good developers for 7800 now it's it's in its uh golden age i don't know uh, bob de, de Crescenzo was the golden age i think now we're in like the silver age <laughs> like the bronze age silver age i don't know we're in the next phase the, the emerging phase of 7800 where it, ex it explodes yeah it's just it's neat to have just a little bit extra kind of juice in the tank a little extra mm -hmm. gas in the tank you know like mm -hmm. um yeah and uh oh yes that's right oh my god the, i almost the, forgot the platinum uh, the bonus stuff yes so let me bring that up right now there's going to be a bonus for EXO, when you when you buy the game, um, I'm going to show a little bit of this because I'm sure he does not want me to show all of it. Bring this up. One second. And this is just a draft of it right now. Let me read what he's got um, to say about this. Um, I've also included the latest draft of Betrayal, an EXO-1 story. Because there is going to be an EXO-2. Uh, this will be provided as a printed booklet with the signature edition of the game later in the year. Okay, so there's going to be uh, different versions of the game. So this will be with the signature edition. Along with a making of booklet with some previously unseen illustrations from the game design. Betrayal is an early draft and will be reviewed by an editor before production, but I, um, it runs to 12,548 words and is a short novella. Wow. The story brings the reader right up to the start of the game, so it's pre-game information about the world so where did this come from was this written by like an original sort of thing if it's a Good novella question. length is this based off of like existing content or are you kind of did you basically write a novella and then make a game <laughs> uh it doesn't give credit so i'm gonna assume that lewis hill 
wrote this. Wow. Was this something you were like cultivating for a long time? Or was it like, um, uh, cause yeah, it's such an, I've never heard of sort of like, that's such a beautiful kind of thing. Yeah. Based on strange parts of my mind. It's so sick, man. <laughs> years. I, years. It Whoa. makes sense. I, well, I, yeah. I have, I love this lore that we're sort of like engaging in, you know? Uh, the story brings Reuter, uh right up to the start of the game, setting the scene for the mission, the who, the where, and the why. I don't think a 7800 game has ever had a feature, and it's one I'm quite excited about. And I know um, some Atari games back in the 80s came with a comic that would explore some of the Atari Force, I think it was. I don't know. I think I have one of the comics, maybe. Um, so here's the cover of it. And let's take a look at just first little bit of it because it, it's it's like a story um ex01 betrayal extraction any time now zoe whispered colonel john montgomery over the encrypted radio circuit inbound came the terse response that last barrage clipped the stabilizer replied command pilot zoe wren ryan brought the wasp tech v around in a low arcing turn trying to get a fix on the offending air defense battery while also trying to fly low enough to stay out of the line of sight. There you go. There's a little preview Very of, cool. of the story that's going to come uh, with it, the novella, uh, in the signature it's edition It's a good length, too, game. like with that 27 pages. It's really solid, yeah. so it's got enough. It's like, a, a, you can crush 27 pages in one sitting pretty pretty easily. Yeah. It's not so too daunting. So somebody can do that, you know, sitting in the back seat of their parents' car on the way home mm -hmm. from PRGE, Reading, <laughs> reading the novella, waiting to get home to pop the seven eight hundred game into their uh, their console that they got for Christmas last year. That's awesome. Um, oh, right about Atari Force. I did get the name right. Artie was one twenty eight, but it's moving to two fifty six k. Yeah, that was. Um, I didn't mention that, but that the one I showed on uh, the uh, today is two fifty six now, and it was one hundred twenty eight. Uh, before muddy is clearly not impacted impacted by the writer's strike <laughs> <laughs> no. no he's being a scab well, that's the thing is but this yeah. isn't for tv well no it's also like um you know, or movies when you're trying to, to when you're trying it. to get paid to write it's different than <laughs> yes when that's right writing and crafting your own sort of lifelong pursuit i mean that's that's the interesting challenge you have right of like are you why are you creating something like yes. from a writing point of view are you doing are you creating a product are you yeah. creating something to hire to get to hired? be consumed just by the masses? Yeah, um, to be put out by somebody else, or is this and and something by, that is from your heart? And even by a product, the question of a product is what service is this providing? Is this escapism? Is this to right. examine culture? Is you know like yeah. there's there's different like purposes, and also is this like part of your continued exploration or, as an artist? Is this a lot like, of this? I think especially with like homebrew is wish fulfillment yeah um because this demographic grew up with these systems played the games that were out at the time and wondered why other games weren't on the system um or an idea they had when there was a they were a kid they wrote it on a piece of paper wrote some maps and stuff but obviously there's no development environment back then and now yeah. they can do it that's like wish fulfillment of their own and they know that people like us are going to love to play these games. And and you know what? I think, man, like, there's been this stuff that's been going on. We won't get too into it, but it's also, like, I just, I think one of the things I wanted to say about it is that um, there's a million obstacles in the production of anything. Yes. And the reality is, is how you navigate those obstacles yeah. is the create is the creative process. Yeah. And don't let anybody else stop you from creating the things that you want to create. You'll discover that your creative output doesn't matter what name it has, what title it has, how it goes, your expression. There's ways to do that, and this is just another obstacle to manage, and that's okay. Yeah. You know, it's it's tricky though. Like, and it's the same with writing stories. You know. But the beautiful thing is, like, for example, um, uh, one of my favorite television shows is True Detective. Mm -hmm. And the writer was writing, uh, had to write a buddy cop 
movie. <laughs> and what came out was True Detective. You know, it's oh. he was writing, he started as a spec script for like some body wow. cop thing. And what's interesting is... So he didn't is, let it go to waste. No, he like, he and then he changed the names, he yeah. added his own thing, and all of a sudden we created one of these beautiful things. And I yeah. think there's this concept of like original versus like spec or these kinds of things. And you almost yeah. have this idea that like original is completely original. You've never seen this before. Yeah. Spec is like, oh, it's hack. We're just like... It's part of a world you know, that's but, already there. But it's also like you have a very creative writer taking on an old convention, taking his own spin on it. Yeah. And I think you can take inspirations from anything and make it your own. And yep. that's... that's But but it is... It's, it's, it's a hit. Um, <laughs> it's lots of stuff's going on. Um, yep. uh, but I, but we'll I, navigate through it. You, you, we'll everyone make it will out get the through other it. Side. And, but just, I think my big thing is I love all the games you guys are making. I love being able to play them. Oh, don't, yeah. don't just keep going, guys. Keep making things. Keep following that. And treat, there's a million obstacles in any creative pursuit. Oh my you, god! Your creative yeah. energy. You can always find a way to to express your own thing. And if you gotta like change names, switch things around, it's gonna be okay. You know. And, and luckily, in the homebrew world, there really is very few barriers. Yes, there's all we can always release things out there without anybody having to say yes or no. Um, yeah, in film, oh, that's that, <laughs> that costs money to make films. Unfortunately, that's to right. make it at a, a level where it gets to the mass market, that's it's very expensive. You almost have to go through somebody else to get it out there. It just like costs my, so much money. Like my film, to get it on Amazon Prime, I can't do that myself. No. I literally can't. I have to go. Th I had to go through a um, distribution uh, company that was established, had an established relationship with Amazon Prime to get it on there, um, and you just literally can't do that yourself unless you no. already are in that position. Um, or are big enough to talk to them directly and then get it financed by Amazon Prime and they put their own stamp on it, right? There you go. Erlen Lovett, Inspiring Sentiments, couldn't agree more. There yeah, just go. don't don't let anyone stop you from doing your thing. Nope. And, nope. and no one can. That's, no that's one can. actually the yeah. truth. <laughs> and obstacles, man, that's you, those are never going to go away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the biggest obstacle is you. That's always that's... the biggest obstacle. Making Finishing a game like finishing a movie is a miracle. Yeah. It's an absolute miracle. Creating that it any gets done. creative project. And getting to the end. That's your expression. That's yeah. your sort of thing. And and I'm so pumped that Muddy wrote a novella, dude. I'm like that's, I'm so on board with this. That's and huge. inspired like, by mixed media. Yeah. It's game and writing. Like there's writing in the game, but this is like a standalone can can be by on its own but combined together wow that's and i f could feel that energy in the game when we were playing it i could feel like when you're referencing these names you're just like these yeah. things going on i can feel when i'm like part of a real lore there's a real thing and i love that stuff man it's yeah. so it, all, the just the heart and energy of creativity that you put into that novella then extended into the game even though technically like i could play this game and not know any of that stuff i feel that you've put that in and that's meaningful yeah, it is. It it really makes an impact. It's like when you saw the covers of uh, video games in the 70s and 80s, and mm -hmm. then you pop in the game, and it's it doesn't look anything like that. But that's the imagery you take into the game, and people reading this before they get into the game, they could they probably established a voice for each of the characters and they've transported that within the game and when the the dialogue's going on the screen like after you finish yeah. that level the second level um they could probably or the third level they could probably hear those voices again of these characters <laughs> they already know these characters and who they are like there's no descriptives in the game because there's not enough room but from the book that's that adds a whole layer of creativity and and, and the age-old building blocks of narrative is like a character setting plot yeah you know and when you have Motivation. when you have yeah. that embedded in your game even <laughs> i love it i'm in yeah I love you're not just firing <laughs> missiles for firing missiles sake you're you're there's a uh there's stakes there there's goals that you're trying to achieve you're trying to risk you their your team that you've 
You've established, dude. Some mouse, care I fucking for rescued mouse today, man. That exactly. meant that meant that's, something to me. I could just rescue some weight to I that. Could, I could like fly fly over some fucking green orb that says you got it, <laughs> yeah, and you're like, right. well, you know, it's easy to make something like just kind of, and that's the sort of plug and play idea. Oh, we're collecting tokens. I got a token, but no, it's cool. I saved mouse, man, and I got to get the chip. Mouse and, like, is a real person. I, right? I love, I love all that stuff. It's yeah. and and yeah, the setting in particular was lovely in these games, and yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. Thanks so much for like for for letting us play these yeah man it's, it's really an honor real treat over today over to like get to sort of hang out in, in muddy's world man it's actually right. it's a cool world to hang out in it so is thanks, man. it's very rich it's very fun uh fun show thank you so much metal lunar uh and yes uh you're very welcome anytime we love playing your games they're they're absolute masterpieces yeah. like all the way back to tire tracks his first 2600 game I knew it was something special with Muddy. <laughs> just the graphics in that game are just absolutely gorgeous. So I knew this guy was going. He came out of nowhere, and I knew he was going somewhere. But I never would have like imagined now what he's created. All these amazing games, and it's always a pleasure to talk to him as well uh, on the on the show. Um, so, uh, like I said, this is the last show for two weeks. We're going on a little summer break, so you guys can relax, um, watch. Uh, make sure you follow uh, Twitch because we are going to be doing uh, some after darks, getting some high scores, playing through some levels that we didn't get to play through on the show because you can't make shows 10 hours long. Um, <laughs> uh, and we will be back on the 18th. These are just placeholders. Don't know what we're going to be playing. Um, but uh, be back on the 18th with more... 2600, 7800, Jaguar, Atari 8 bit, Lynx. All the, all the good stuff, right? Yep, the Magic and, uh, 5. Yeah, and, and, and keep, keep. And the 5200. And keep going, one. guys. It's going to be okay. It's yep. going to be okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah. pumped to see what comes up. And Fine. if anyone wants uh, to play a masterpiece of a RPG, Fall at New Vegas is That's highly. Your recommendation? A goal. It's, it's, it's a gold standard of a game. You might have to push a little bit, but it's it's incredible stuff. So it's, that's gotten me pumped about Great. gaming again. So that's my recommendation of and, the week. And coming up, um, Tanya's going to take a Friday off so that she can be here. Oh, cool. And Darcy can be here. And you can be here. And we're going to play some four-player games. Oh, dude, the four-player is always... going to do a huge four-player-only show. I'm, I'm in. That's um, always... So we can finally, because I have my uh, Atari 5200 upgraded, so that it works. Uh, there's Quadtari for the 7800 and 2600. There's the... Oh, I don't have it. Where is it? Uh, the Team Tap for the Jaguar for four players. We're going to play a whole bunch of four-player games yeah. and have a lot of fun. It'll be later on when it's not so hot. Because yeah. <laughs> it's not so much fun packing four people in with lights, with no air conditioning <laughs> into this room. So we'll, see, be... we'll see what time it is, but me and Tanya yeah. might have a beer, you know. It'll, it'll be noon. <laughs> oh, then I, I know beer for me. I'll have some coffee. But... Well, let's see. Yeah. Well, we could make it maybe later in the evening. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how it all Yeah, because you're more flexible on Friday. Very flexible, yeah. Darcy's pretty flexible. And if she's taking the day off, she's very flexible. Yeah, I'm might, very flexible. Might be fun to hit like a like a 5, 6 p.m. or something. Or... Yeah, the only issue is that it's like, well, the European people guys, can't watch. And... Oh, yeah, that's true. That's that's why I want to make it early. I'm fine to do early. Yeah. It's all good. Okay. But if it were evening, I'll have a beer. And if it's the morning, I'll have a coffee. Ooh, both Carl, are, Carl, both do are you kind of want, want to make a new four player game just for that upcoming event? You if should you dude. want to make a four-player game. I've got one in mind. It's a homebrew port, Ooh. and I'll message you after the show. It's very. It looks very easy to make, so it'll be very a fast turnaround. And then you can get permission. Yeah. And a lot of people were suggesting that we're going to make ports of homebrew games where we can contact the developers because they're just like all the developers here, just making games, and it looks so much fun. It'd be <laughs> perfect for the seventy-eight hundred. So I'll uh, I'll reach out to you. They need to find four strangers on the street so they can play an eight player too. Yeah, we'll just recruit people off the street. Oh, we'll find some people. Play play some Vroom. But you know yeah. what? We always got the cat controller. We got two cats that can vibe. That's right. You know, I, I, we'll see how well they do. It. You know, four player light gun game. I only have two light guns, but I have to modify it. Only if it has meth talk. <laughs> Uh, we're going to do a light... Oh, let's go through some of the special shows that we might... We'll be doing coming up in the... In the fall. After the summer break. Yeah. Um, 
There's a multiplayer marathon. That's what we're going to be doing. Um, dual joystick game. Very cool. Show, because I've got uh, dual joysticks that are in one thing from the Ed, from Ed Ladin. Um, oh, there it is. Yeah, Atari 7800 40th Anniversary Classic Gaming Countdown. I do have it here. 2026. Uh, and then 2027, the Atari 5245 Anniversary Classic Gaming Countdown. And I'll have to add in the Atari 2600 one as well. Maybe I'll make that 20, 2027? Hmm. Maybe when it was discontinued. 2032, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um... Then there's Atari. Don't, ages. don't worry, 2032 it'll happen. Yeah, Tw uh, dual paddle games, not many. No, no many. Uh, Atari Ages 25th Anniversary Celebration 2026. That'll be fun because they started in 2001 as Atari Age. Um, after they changed their name from the Atari Connection, I think. Um, a bunch of uh, ZPH favorites that I'm uh, queuing up. Those would be like filler shows some when classics. I don't have some stuff like multiplayer, RPG, puzzle, arcade, platformers, shooters. ZPH abandoned favorites. These are games that haven't been touched in like five years or more, but they're Dude, super awesome. See if we can like inject some like little. It's happened. Some, like, get, it's you know, happened. That little... People are like, oh, this is awesome, and the developer gets wind of it, and he's like, bring, oh, bring, yeah, I should finish that game. A little, little bzz, yeah, bring it back to life, you never know. Yeah. Um, uh, Tetris Homebrew, all the Tetris clones, we can contrast and compare them all. It's crazy how that song is just so iconic. Oh, like, it's you know so I mean? catchy and so upbeat, it's awesome. I was going to do a chat's choice, Ooh. where everybody suggests them, we spin a wheel of all their suggestions. You load it up. And... Load it up and spin it, and then we get to playing it. Um, let's see. Oh, we want to do a developer spotlight on Chris Walton. Oh, when sick. When his uh, next games are ready. Um, hopefully Dan Kitchen's game, Casey's Gold, will come up uh, in the fall or maybe next year. Uh, he is, he is, he's posted here and there that is still working on it. Competitive Etch-A-Sketch. There is an Etch-A-Sketch game. Oh, yeah, there is a dual paddle uh, Etch-A-Sketch game. It's not <laughs> a game, though. You're just Etch-A-Sketching. Um, uh, light Gun. Oh, I do have a Light one, Gun one as well. Where is it? Oh, no, I don't have it in the list. That's terrible. Um, light Gun will be for multiple systems because there's some 2600 Light Gun games, 7800, 8-bit... Uh, Light gun games. I think that's it. Fifty two hundred. I'll have to put the word out and get get the the master list. I wish I could help. I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm in the dark here. I can't. How are you going to do those? Well, because we've done a Vectrex show, we pointed a camera at the Vectrex and exposed it, and it worked amazingly. I'm going to set up a Commodore monitor and do the same thing and point the camera at that. And shoot at the CRT, because light guns only work with CRTs. Makes sense. Um, oh, Smitty says, I'll have to get the lead out and finish light gun game I had in the works. Awesome. Get it done. My Vroom 8-player setup. Let's take a look at that. Got to always check that out. Somebody posted something. Oh, there's Vroom on the screen. Oh, classic! I love, mm. I love um, the organization of. Uh, oh, look at that table of all the stuff around. Like I can see all the games. Is and that? The... Is that soft? Uh, oh, that feels. Like it looks it. like it's soft because you could push it one way or the other. What is it? Velvet, something like that. Oh, that's gorgeous. There's the eight paddles. It's a carpet. It's yeah. a carpet. Oh, it's on the floor. I thought it was a table. Oh yeah, it goes under the legs there. And there's the eight paddles, and uh, there's the one player playing it. <laughs> but there's a good setup. That's very nice. The room instructions. Awesome. So lots of themed uh, games coming up. We're going to be doing some some upgrades around here as well. I told Erlen what's, uh, what's happening with the upgrades, but it'll happen when... Uh, I'll reveal it when you get to see it. That's, That's the way. It's more fun that it's way. It's way more fun than, than that, but I'll, I'll tell you. Reveals are fun. Reveals right? are very fun. And we'll be able to get 
to use the Atari Lynx now as well. Nice. That's very exciting. Um, I'll be adding some more rewards, I think, into the channel. Some more alerts, some more on-screen things that people can do. Yeah, um, Erlen's helped me with a couple of those, mm -hmm. made some suggestions. I'll have to implement those. That's why I'm taking the two weeks off as well. Yeah. Do some upgrades to, to things going on yeah, and take some, a break. Yeah, it's some fun sort of meta Twitch stuff, you know? Because yeah. I think I, I think I probably watch more kind of random Twitch shows than James because I think James is yeah. so busy like me and making and yeah, think... Watch think, it once in a while. But. Yeah, things outside of the space of like this too. And there's lots, there's a lot of like um, innovations that Twitch, that streamers use. There's yeah. lots to learn from different shows. So I think I'll, I'll do that. I'll check out some random random Twitch streams and see what they're doing, get some ideas and see how I can um, change it to work with this show and not go overboard. And not to, and you make it yours. Like that's the other yeah. thing we've been talking about is not to like make it, make it no. its own thing, but there's you do have to customize it for like, Oh, whatever the cats are doing or, you know, yeah. customize it for homebrew things. Like you can't just straight up transport it over because it doesn't apply. To, yeah, but, to what we're doing here. But there is a lot of cool shit going on in the Twitch space. It's, nice. There's a whole, there's a lot of really interesting stuff. Yeah, yeah. That is a nice carpet. Where did you get that? <laughs> <laughs> and how much is it? Yeah, I can. It is really nice. Hmm. Hmm. I can see, oh. I can see everyone in the chat is like, like, yo. It's jealous, yeah. Uh, and you can see all his game, his games on his shelf. I'm just going to switch back and zoom in a bit here. Yeah, let's do some investigations. Uh, all, all the great do tire here. tracks right there. Dude. Yeah, that's Muddy's. That's some right. Zippy. Ah, uh, he's got Venetian blinds. Oh, that's a that's a crazy one. That's not even a game. Asteroids Deluxe Pitfall. I see. Yeah. Oh, uh, see, even mix, I know some of, of these. Mix of classics in there. Some seventy eight hundred. Donkey Kong PK, Donkey Kong XM. Pac-Man on the far left. Uh, there's Bob's game, Crystal Quest. Uh, Bob DeCrescenzo collection. Oh, some rare oh, stuff all this here. stuff here. So well organized, too. Yes, really very nice. Really nice to see. A um, bunch of classic ones in there, along with, oh, all the Christmas Atari Age uh, releases. I can recognize those. A whole bunch of loose homebrew that never came with a box. A uh, bunch of box stuff. Got Popeye Berserker there. up there. Yeah. And a bunch of classic games up there. Uh, Panky the Panda. Such <laughs> a great platformer. Oh, so much good stuff. <laughs> Sorry, cat hair. Blue pa Baby Pac-Man. Where's that? Oh, there. Yeah. Esther Mirrors probably has the biggest collection of homebrew that anyone has. So like, cool. Hands down for sure. He has every single game. Every time a thread has come up, he posts a picture of the game he has, and it's like, oh my god, that's crazy. That's the Atari room. That's awesome that you've got an Atari room, man. Oh, I wish I... I guess this is my Atari yeah, room. this is definitely your Atari room. Like, <laughs> yeah. I wish I had this. It's like, it's like oh, I guess I do. Have yeah, it. you got a streaming It's slash. like, you, you guys can't see what's... It's packed to the ceiling all around. It's, Very well organized, I'd say. I know I've you... reorganized it recently, and it's a lot cleaner. It's it's kind of switched over completely to homebrew. Like almost everything is yeah, now homebrew. You, you up used here. to have like DVDs and stuff, and yeah. I, think, I can tell you've sort movies of consolidated. Are gone. Yeah, yeah. How about Princess? Oh, does S. Ramirez have Princess Rescue? The big question. Yeah, Ooh. that's the that's one of the rarest homebrews out there. That's that's the like yeah. That's the yanked by Nintendo. Oh yeah. Yeah. And really early on, so only a few copies got out there. That's the the crown jewel. It was out for about two weeks, three weeks. Uh, he still hasn't answered. <laughs> okay, uh, so we are out of here for two weeks. Make sure you follow on Twitch. Everybody here is followed, um, so you know that uh, when we pop up, we may not announce that we're doing After Dark. We may just come into the room switch it on and go for it um because you know we have a couple hours or whatever at night yeah be fun um so thank you everyone uh thank you erlen for coming hey, today my pleasure always a great time esther mirrors thrust Vitoko, carl g mr rosarna whoop uh, of course muddy for letting us oh, play your games thanks. man huge shout out to muddy huge smitty b rc70 muddy funster uh rendered ghost master ksi uh metal lunar 7 uh pack lander 
Sorry about my voice. It's very deep today. That was Just good. recovering. I'm getting your radio voice. That's right, everyone. Uh, it's not clear enough, though. It's a little bit raspy. But, yeah, that works. Ivory Tower Collection, B.R. Pocock. Uh, Smitty B, Mother 3. A whole bunch of people today. It's awesome. Really cool Chatting to see. Chatting it up. Oh, and that's the end of the, the, the scroll back that I have. Danny VC, there we go. Um, so, like I said, uh, it's the last show for two weeks, uh, but uh, we'll be back in force in no time. You'll, you'll you'll be like, oh, it's already done. Yeah, enjoy the break, everyone. Yeah, enjoy the break. And, uh, yeah, so have a great uh, weekend, long weekend, if you have the day off. Um, a happy uh, Canada Day and USA Day. What the hell is yeah. it called down there? Um, uh, Fourth of July. Uh, Fourth of July. It's is called something it's... Independence Day. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Happy everything. And... Uh, We'll see you uh, on Tuesday, uh, two weeks from now. Yeah, we'll see you on the other side. Oh, yes, and I'm going to be coding. Good doing stuff. some Atari 2600 coding. Getting in there. Getting Tri- humbled. Hopefully, hopefully I can get it done before the end of the two weeks, but I I promise I'll have a very good start. Yeah. So if you see me in the uh, forums asking for help, please help me. Yeah, help James. <laughs> yes, help me get through my uh, troubleshooting of coding. Um, hopefully I have something to show you guys by the time we come back, but two weeks may not be long enough. It's very simple what I'm doing, but still simple is hard for 2600. Yeah. So, uh, have a great weekend and we'll see you very soon. Bye everyone. Bye guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for sure. coming to the show. Bye.